Dane? Yeah. I, uh, I just finished my ducks, Chuck. There you go. I, I made it a little different than I think uh, Jim made it. Though I took I took two pieces of actual three quarter stock. I used a hole saw. Yeah. Drilled, drilled it out with the hole saw, glued it together, and then screwed the two pieces together. And then I have a hole that's centered in that piece. So right. now I can uh, now I can start making Christmas trees for my Christmas for my friends at Christmas. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Good job. Yeah, it's amazing how many iterations that that has gone through. Yeah. The uh, I do have to trim off the corners. I I don't particularly like those uh, sharp edges going past my fingers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's a good idea. Scott and Eddie are in. There he is. Just found all the buttons. All right. Uh oh, now we're in trouble. Big <laughs> stuff. Evening, evening, Eddie. Hey, boy, we get the deadly duo out of the UK. Looking good, Eddie. Good evening, folks. How are y'all? Doing good. Good, thanks, Eddie. How are you? Fresh haircut. I got a fresh haircut today. This one yeah. over here. Uh huh. <laughs> I uh, yeah, I'm red on red, and I got my one more swipe shirt on for for Joaquin Vincent. <laughs> In case he shows up. In case he gets crowded like it did last week. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Make room for gotta make make room on the tailgate this week. You know, you know, Eddie, that uh, that our preacher at our church is from uh, Tennessee, and he says, you know, the difference, y'all is singular, all y'all is plural. Really, yeah, yuns <laughs> and yuns is is plural for plural possessive. R really, <laughs> yes. Uh, when I was in the Air Force, I learned out that most uh, most compasses are supposed to be Y, 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 because everything is over yonder. <laughs> oh, well, if you come to Ireland, everything's up the way and down the way. Up the way and down the way. Uh, that's yeah. like here here in New Orleans, it's, it's uh, uptown and downtown. Yeah. Um, it, it, but it's on... If you, if you ask for directions here in Ireland, you if you say, "Could you tell? Could you tell me where the church is?" They'll say, "Yeah." So you'll go up the way here down this road, and uh, you'll go up the way, and uh, you go round a bend, and you, you, if you see a tree, you've gone slightly too far. You come back a bit, uh, go down the way, and it should be up the way just there. I got directions to a to a restaurant one time in a little town in about middle of Louisiana, out in the out in the middle of nowhere. Where, and a guy said, "Okay, you get on this road and just keep going. Then you go down this one, uh, right past the place that burned down. Okay, and then uh, just about the time you think you were too far, one more hill, and there it is. And and, and that was the way he gave directions. What he missed is." If I just went up the park a lot the other way, I'd, went right, I'd go right by it in about two minutes. <laughs> but that's not the way he went. It was, it was a good restaurant. It was worth the trip. It really was. Hey, I see Brenda's in. Hi, Eddie. Brenda's got a new tail, a new toolbox. Yeah. Yeah, buddy. It's nice to go shopping this week. It's got plug-ins on the side of it and a USB port, too. Do you now? How about that? Yeah. Does it have an antenna? Nope, no antenna. Uh, got to get the and curb feelers. Got to get curb, curb feelers. <laughs> I saw a car in the park a lot the other day. Uh, a, Mer a Mercury. That was the tops. It was a Mercury. Uh, but it had curb feelers on it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and my wife, her daddy is, is one of the world's awesome mechanics. She looked up. She said, "What in the hell is that sticking out of that car?" 
And I said, I'm telling you, Danny, I'm, I'm, I'm calling Bud right now because he's got to know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he didn't raise the child up right because we all knew what those things were. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and everybody knew what they were. And you, you knew that whoever had them might have had a little money because they didn't want to ruin their tires. Uh, or or their, what do you call them? Sk- skirts? You had the, yeah, the, the wheel skirts. The, um, um, I'm, I'm drifting off there, huh? The things used to fill in the backs that covered the wheel, the wheel well. Um, fender skirts. Fender skirts. That's it. Yeah. Oh, you're old too. <laughs> that's funny you mentioned that, Eddie. I seen uh, curb feelers on uh, Facebook today, and somebody commented that if you know what these are, you're really old. We were just the other day, we were talking about coming. If there's a curb in a parking lot, my wife's going to hit it. (laughs) Uh, And and we were coming out of the parking lot the other day, and I said, Oh, $500 bump on the right. She she said, said, What? I said, If you hit that curb with this car, it's going to run us 500 bucks. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> and, and she said, oh, I see the curb. I said, I asked if you saw it. I'm just saying that if you hit it, you know, because she, she 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 blames it on the car. Yeah, well, something's got to be at fault. Um, well, yeah, right. I mean. And most likely it's not the woman. Well, it's not my, magnetic, you know. Yeah, it's not my wife. Mm-hmm. Uh, hey, got that orders for stickers came in this week. Uh, let's see who this one came in. Oh, went, I th- oh no, it didn't go out in the mail today. I see well, Doug Rowe got his today. T- yeah, Doug, Doug, Doug's a character. Isn't he? <laughs> uh, Tom Kovalak. Kovalactic. Koval- Kovalak. Out of Barrington, New Hampshire, ordered some. I got them taken care of today. Um, me and management had a discussion about PayPal. Um, it's supposed to be my my source of income for funding these projects and what I get back from PayPal. Um, but we still have a bunch of them left. We were cleaning out, getting rid of furniture. Um, it it follow, doesn't it? people see you have a blank space on the wall? They think you need furniture, so. Uh-huh. Her family sees and says, oh, I got a great piece of furniture in my house that'll look really good right there. Then they send it over. Uh-huh. And I'm thinking, I kind of like the paint. Uh, <laughs> right. You were you were watching the uh the, the bunny, the bunny fight going on there in the on the paint background. Yeah. And they uh th- th- as soon as it gets here, you gotta find somebody to take it. And I'm I'm not going to call my kids and say, "Hey, you want a piece of furniture?" Because um, I think that's how all the stuff gets started, you know, you know. But they 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 had sent a piece over a while back, most useless thing I ever seen, and uh, it stayed here for a while in a corner, and it just you know it's a flat surface. What's it going to do? It's going to collect stuff. Yeah. So the other day she says, "You know what?" I'm tired of that. It's going to go. Me, I didn't hesitate. You know, stack it all out someplace, and you know, I, we can shove it out the door and get it down to a cart. Get it out to the sidewalk. You know, let let the public have it. Um, and we did that. And then she says, "Where did all this stuff come from?" I said, "That's the deal. If you got a flat surface, ask a wood turner. If you got a flat surface, it's going to collect something." I mean, look, look around, look around your house at all the projects you've collected and you have displayed and all, and they say, I'm running out of room. Yeah. It's, uh, one, of Murphy, it's one of Murphy's laws. The amount of stuff you have expands to fill available space. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cool box. I can't believe that in a second. I can. Like, you know, you know, a friend of mine used to say, he said, would you do this week? I don't want to wash the car. He says, it doesn't get rained on. You know, 
Uh, okay. Harry, if you knew I went 10 years without washing this one, you'd have a fit. Uh, yeah. But it's if you live in some areas, if you don't wash the salt off, it's going to eat it up. Or the other crud that we get in the air. <laughs> but I'm not, not into that. Boy, it's a beautiful day out here today. Hope you folks are having some good weathers up there where you're at. Um, I haven't been watching anything. Uh, yeah, I it, was, it, was, it was gorgeous here this morning. It was 17 and my wind chill was three. Whoa. <laughs> I'm getting a lot of emails from Ron Radliff, my buddy, my Air Force buddy up in the Northwest. And it must be terrible weather up there because I'm getting a ton of them. And, and he's a good source of tidbits of news and and comical comic relief by way of uh little characters and all that uh ron's been communicating with me for almost 20 years now about this kind of stuff in fact when i had my brain tumor my, my first tumor uh well Ron was constantly in contact. Nobody knew what happened to me. They, he called the house and they, they said what, where I went and what I was doing. And they stayed in touch with them. And my wife and my daughter took my laptop to communicate with folks and post some things on Facebook and Ustream and all that. And she hated Ron because of all the stuff he sent me. <laughs> Because he would send me some stuff. I mean, he's not an Air Force buddy. And he was a, he's an ammo troop. He's a nuclear ammo troop. I was a blown up troop. He was a hope we don't blow him up troop. Uh, he's a character. He's he's in the club. He was one of the founding members of Worldwide Woodturners. He was. He was one of the guys I contacted and said, do you think this would work? He said, yes. And we gave him a new job recently. Yes. Tonight, you'll be introduced to, to this. We have a new team in this organization, or lack thereof. Uh, we have a new team working for you, and Ron's in on that team. Uh, a lot of folks dropping in, and but, you know, I'm looking around. There's some empty seats. There's empty seats on this team. Well, well, later on, when, when Dane and I chat about this, we'll let you know what those seats, how empty they are and why they're empty and who can fill them. And I think if you look in the mirror today, you'd probably see the person I'm talking about that can fill one of these seats because it's, uh, it's your club. So we got that, and you look, and it keeps filling up. It keeps filling up. I see, I see some of the team members on the screen right now. So we're packing them up, and it's just because this group is growing, really growing. I love it. Bring a friend, bring a friend, bring a friend. Um, I, uh, oh, what else we got this week? Oh, we talked, uh, we've talked recently about upcoming events. We've got a group master webmaster here, our guy, Dave Rhodes. He's not our guy, he's your guy. Uh, this is the guy that manages the world's finest website for wood turning ever. It might be the world's finest website ever, but this is what we're turning. We're going to close it down a little bit. Uh, and he puts things together that no one else has ever endeavored to do um, without compensation um, or remuneration, whatever, monetize. Um, we do this for the benefit of wood turning, not the benefit of a pocket. I've got to be clear about that. This is never for the benefit of a pocket. Your pocket, my pocket, their pocket, or anybody else's. This is for the benefit of us winterners. And that's how this whole thing was devised. Well, we came up with this thing. We want to talk about future events. So Dave created an event calendar. Yeah. I don't know if there's another one like this anywhere, but it's right open to everybody and everybody, anybody. And it doesn't say... You have to belong to Joe's club or Bob's gang or uh, this group or organization or this or that. Or you have to wear a certain color shirt or anything. Look, I'm wearing red on red. So, But none of that matters. It just matters that it's an event and it deals with wood turning. Well, this Friday, Cindy Drozda, that's the insure lady wood turner, you know, nice little lady, 
She's got another one of her events. Another one of her free workshops is going to be on this weekend, this Friday. And she teams up with some really great um, instructors and demonstrators. Now, they do IRDs, and they charge for them. And that's fine. That's business. But Cindy and a few of the others put together free workshops. This Friday is one. I tune into it. I like it. it. It's interesting. And no matter what, and you know this, don't you? No matter what, when she cranks up her shop and starts working, there's something she has or does that you just, just didn't think about. You go, Man, I should have done that. And I should have thought about this. Should have, you know, that's what you get. And that's why we have this page you know, on our website, Upcoming Events, because we don't want you to miss it. Suppose you're hard at work and you got too much to do. Yeah, all right. I said suppose, okay? And uh, you can click on the, the website and, you know, watch a little bit of uh, wood turning for a little while to relieve the pressure. You know, that is for you people that have the W-O-R-K thing going on. Uh, there it is. Mark your calendar. Put it in there. You can watch it. It's not charged, just like right here. Suppose you miss what's happening tonight. Yeah. And you don't know what. You, you, you say, you know what, they did this, and I oh, I wish I could, um, you know, I want to I wanna recap that and see how that went or something like that. You know where you can go? Right here. WorldwideWoodTurners.org. Yeah. Yeah. See, Dave is at, at the house in the shop, and he's in there saying, wow, demonstration, let me break it up. Yeah, oh, they got that thing up on my Line that up, yeah, and and that little tip and hint, yeah, and put, and guess where it all goes on that website? Every bit of it goes on that website, so you don't have to worry if I have to go back and find issue nine because this is number two hundred and eighteen. Do I have to go back two hundred eighteen issues to see? Yeah, no, it's all right there. And if it's a really cool, nifty, inventuous thing or groundbreaking or wood shaving event, it's going to be highlighted. And suppose you got one, suppose you have one that we hadn't seen very much of, or it's really, you know, kind of not so. It's going to be safe, right? But kind of like that, and you want to share with people. Guess where you can send it? Yep. Dave Rhodes. Send it to him, share it with him. In a little while, we'll tell you where else you can share it. And this is a where else that uh, I'd like to say nobody else can share it. Unfortunately, that's not the truth. This is the place where everybody can share it. And again, it's going to be one of those things to where everybody's a member. And everybody can participate. So we got a lot going on. We got a whole lot going on. I hope it gets busy like last weekend. I was so flustered last weekend because Dane did a great job of lining up all these people, lining up all these people, all you people. <laughs> um, got everybody together and we, we started talking tips and hints. We ran out of world. Yeah, not out of time, out of world. We went on and on and on and on and on and on. And we still had, I want to say regulars, because everybody's regular. But we still had people lined up wanting to share stuff. So then, this is how it works here. Said, you know, we like that tips and tricks thing. We've talked about this. We, uh, there's no hierarchy in a club. There's a whole just a bunch of people on the tailgate to sit and talk. Said, well. We're going to do this more, a little more regular. So we went to a calendar master. Dane happens to be that guy because he puts all the demos together. And about every three months, we're going to do a tips and tricks program. So if you missed out on the last one, you can wait three months. But that's not really cool to keep secrets. So, but that's if we format it and say, you know, we like to see your tip or trick. We want to see it now, but 
every three months, we kind of let's compress them. Let's get them all back together. Let's bring them back out. That's how we've seen some really nifty stuff come through. I think it's how we found Duxbury or Duxbury found us. We're not too sure. Uh, and, and trust me, you don't want to be too sure about how we came across with the Duxburys. Um, but, you know, he walked, Jim walked in one day and said, we said, we should tip our trick. And then, whoa, you know, there's a whole bunch of people like him. And is well, you, you can do that. You can say, you know, I saw you do this with such and such. But if you take your time, you can do such and such and come up with whatever. And, you know, it might not be fender covers or wheel or, or curb feelers or whatever. It might be that far back in, in history, but it might be a simple trick or idea that you have. You know, think about the things you learned in basic wood shop when you first got started. A lot of those things were taught to you by people who had done it before that it was instinctive. You made a pass with a power with a with a hand plane. Remember the hand plane, okay? Or jack plane. And you laid it on its side when you put it down. You didn't set it down on its base. That was a definite no no. We're looking for those kinds of tips. You don't do this and lay it on its side. You don't take your skew and lay it across the bed of the lathe and walk off. Uh, you you don't put the, the bright light on the thing you're working on and leave it on and go off to take a, a I want to say utility break, but you know we all had to go to the can, man. Um, and you leave that light on. You know, there are things you learn because it's your work and you don't want to come back and be surprised. You know, when when that skew hits the floor, it's going to hit point down. It really is. Um, and, and if you put your foot out to stop it, it's going to hit point down. Uh, and that's why we don't wear sandals to go turn wood. We learn that too. Ask Safety Sue why we wear sandals. Um, but we're looking for those tips, those hints, those ideas. We're also looking for demonstrations. It's that time of the year, folks. It's that time of the year for every place you go, you should leave a trinket of yours behind as a thoughtful gift. You go to a party or a function or whatever, a wine bottle stopper, uh, you go to dinner, you, you hang out with the kids, you bring a little medallion hanging on a chain, and that's your chance to have your little art side come out. And a nice thing to practice with. Um, I uh, Somebody sent me a photograph of a because we started this thing last week with the, the last meeting with the, the the chucking holding things on a tip trick, he created a vacuum chuck adapter. Yeah, somebody had there was an adapter's vacuum chuck shown last week in the meetings, and he took PVC pipe from all places, the hardware store, and he made step downs for his vacuum chuck, and he went from a four inch collar that he got at Craft Supplies or Penn State or somebody. And he came up with some adapters that would just twist together, snap together. <clears throat> and he put them together with, get this, wax paper to seal the gaps in between them. And uh, that's the nice wax paper makes. And he got it down to like a, an inch and a half um, piece. And then he had a little flat spot in a piece of... Um, and it was right here. My wife took it from me. Piece of mouse pad um, for the padding. And he was turning medallions on that. And he put the block up there. He had, and, and I love the way he showed it. It was kind of gross. He licked, licked the wood to have a little sealed service to it, stuck it on the pad. He faced it off, turned around, faced it off again. And then he moved a little bit on the face off piece to put some gouges and scratches on it. A little bit more. He did all this on a vacuum chuck. All of it. Right there. There was no keys, no jigs, no rigs, no squeezing, no duct tape, nothing. All of it happened right there on a vacuum chuck. And and um, yeah, he, then he sent me pictures. He's done uh, balls and spheres. 
and tops and everything else all on his little vacuum chuck rig. He said, hey, PVC pipe and a hot whistle, all best friends. You know, and he can do this. And he's on a power, that big um, Powermatic that's got the built-in vacuum on it. So that's what he's working with. Well, he said, it's it's so easy. He he had to lay for over a year and never really re- realized how handy that would be to have a vacuum chuck like that. So, and then he, he, had, he had bought the vacuum rig, but didn't understand it. And he got his ideas from you folks on how to build the adapters and things that mock up and on it. And uh, he did have one tip. He said, whatever you do on a vacuum chuck, put a, uh, a pantyhose on a screen down in there so that something doesn't go into the vacuum chuck as a filter as because you can clean it out because you don't want to have you don't want to have the vacuum chuck running and dust off the lathe and have it go right into the, the vacuum chuck so he learned how to do that with pantyhose i didn't really want to ask him where he gets this pantyhose because <laughs> you know this thinks us guys need to keep secret uh but it we that's an idea you get right here on worldwide wood turners so you see we share we come up with things you got something like that to talk about if you got an idea like that if you can put this together in an article yeah. or a tip or a trick and you want us to use it on our website or what we'll talk about in a few moments this is the place to do it and we'll give you an address but well, the address is easy. It's worldwidewoodturners.org under the contact list. It goes to Dave Rhodes. But there's an empty seat next to Dave that last week somebody volunteered to, to share with us and, and fill and take care of. And uh, I think we're going to go to that spot right now. There he is. There he is. This guy right here last week, we were talking. This is Dane Chandler. And Dane is just like all you other volunteers. He's just a member of this group who got involved just like I did, just like Dave and Brenda and Matt, and Carl and Gary and the other 76 people that are on board right now. All of us all got involved and had something, wanted something to do and do good for worldwide wood turners. Um, and not for a company, not for a group, but for a, a function. And last week, Dane said, you know, we used to have a newsletter. And I said, yeah, we had it. We had a newsletter. And uh, emotionally and, and mentally, I could not function at a computer to, to do it anymore. Um, and I had to back away from it. He, 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 won't let, he won't let me alone. He, he wouldn't let me go away. He wouldn't take it, that for an answer. He said, okay, you can't do it. We'll find somebody who can. So last week, he jumped on board right there and said, we'll find an editor. Lo and behold, in about five minutes' time, one of you members jumped out of the woods and said, I'll do it. I got, I have a background of writing a newsletter. Yeah. A nondescript newsletter, which is not... Nondescript means I'm not linked to a particular buyer, seller, or promoting any particular organization um, except the one that owns the newsletter. Okay? So we found one. Joaquin. Joaquin. He's our new editor of the newsletter. He's taken over the head chair. Now, I said the head chair. Right, Dane? That's right. Editor-in-chief. Editor-in-chief. Now, do you know what that means? That, that, that Some folks miss that. He's not the creator. He's the organizer. He's the guy that takes all the components and puts them in the soup. He makes the chili the chili. This is what Joaquin will do. You see, the cook is only in the kitchen to manage the kitchen. So... Joaquin is there to manage the kitchen, and he needs your help. 
He does. What I was talking about a few minutes ago, you got an idea? You see the thing I was talking about with the, the, the Chucks? There, there's an idea and there's many more. And we hear about them every week. Joaquin needs to know about them. He does. So we're going to create an address. And this is with the assistance of the master webmaster, Dave Rhodes, is working with us. You see, I told you there was chairs. There were chairs. Um, Dave Rose is handling part of this. And then we have on over here, we have in the editorial staff, we have uh, Ron Radliff. You know, he's in, he's, in, he's in communications or editorials. And then we have another one over here. And then we have another one. You see, the chairs are filling up, folks. But there's a whole lot of empty seats. And we're looking for folks to fill those seats. And this is your opportunity to be part of this. What is this? Uh, this week, they had a meeting. They. All these other people. All these other meetings. All these other members. Got down to it. Had a meeting. Decided, you know what? That's what they decided. You know what? This can work. But. Unfortunately, when I created the first newsletter, I didn't know that the name I picked happened to be the name of somebody else's website. And she never fussed about it. Never said a word about it. And that was her. Band-Aid Brenda's did that. You're muted, Brenda. What did I do? Turning point. I mentioned it. I did mention it. You mentioned it one time. I did. Right and I felt, I felt terrible about that. But it was, to me, it clicked. And I said, well, that's the way I work. I didn't ask anybody. It clicked. So uh -huh. this time, the, the committee got and they asked me, they said, what do you think about such and such? My response was, does it click? It clicked. What click, Dane? You muted. Can't hear you, Dane. The volume's turned down. Oh. Get back up on that. Let me go back on the phone. There you go. Can you, hear? you got me now? Got gotcha you now. Got gotcha you now. All right, cool. Yep, so Joaquin Jacinta out in uh, North Carolina. Last week, he volunteered to be the editor-in-chief of uh, the new newsletter we're going to start putting out. He's going to start putting out everybody in this group between Facebook and the web page and the, the Zoom meetings. We're all going to be able to contribute. Um, Dave Rhodes, our Master Blaster webmaster, will be uh, putting something on the web page at the very top of the page, probably uh, with the email address where you can uh, email your uh, high resolution photos. Joaquim is going to be putting out a, a PDF type print newsletter that is going to be photo quality to where you can print it and have really sharp images on, on the newsletter should you want to want to print it out. Uh, we're looking at having the first issue roll out on January 3rd. And it's going to encompass any tips and tricks or processes or how to do a project from a uh, block of wood to the, to the finished, finished item that you want to submit. Um, of course, send your pictures in. Pictures will go, be going into it. Uh, we have Ron Radcliffe. He's a... Uh, he's, uh, He's chief in charge of uh, humor. Uh, so we're going to be having our little humor sections within the newsletter, just, just as we did before. And, um, you know, taking any and all submissions and anything that we can do to make things better. We don't know what you guys are wanting to see outside of what I just said. If you have an idea, a suggestion, please reach out to me, Ed, Joaquin, Dave, Scott, any of the co-hosts, or anybody else that uh, has no problem in not being bashful. Um, 
if you got something, share it. That's right. We don't know. We, we can't pull it out at ether. I do a good job of grabbing some stuff, but. No, here, here's an opportunity. And, and the, the way they're formatting the newsletter is it won't be constricted to where, or it will, yeah. there will be a disclaimer on it that says, share this with everybody everywhere all the time. You see right. a lot of things where, you know, I get newsletters all the time that said you can't share this. I used to belong to a club that has a has a publicity director that says you can't copy our newsletter and print it out of a club. Yeah. You know, what? What are you giving away? Worldwide secrets? <laughs> no. So ours is going to go the other direction, the opposite direction. That's what this whole club does. And that is, you, we have something to share. We share. No yeah, restrictions. How fair would that be to have to know something and tell you you can't tell anybody? Isn't that what you did? Didn't that sound like third grade? I'm going to tell you something you can't tell anybody. You know, uh, I have a secret, but if I tell you, I got to kill you. You've heard that. I mean, yeah. I mean or said, you know, uh, I can't talk to you. It's top secret. And did you? Ever hear that kind of garbage on TV and the new in the, in the uh, movies and think that's something? What is top secret? And they make it a big deal about about, about an ex president revealing stuff that's top secret. I can tell you today it's top secret. I can explain the whole thing to you, but it's top secret. Yeah. Um, you know, that kind of stuff. There is there are no secrets here. You know, and and, and re- I'm boy, this is so good. This is no good, but well, you know, the only thing we're missing is what you have, right there. You, you, you members, you have done stuff. You have stuff. You have ideas. Uh, don't hold back. What do you think? You know, somebody's going to condemn your work. Somebody's going to make fun of you. We have a guarantee here. We have a no but guarantee, right here. This is the club with a no but guarantee. Whatever you give us, we can't say, won't say, don't say, I like that, but. No but guarantee. You can share with us. If it's unsafe, we're going to have a caution. We're going to, we're going to you know, and, and if you're out of line, we're going to mute you. Yep. It's just the way it, that is because we don't want you, we don't want anybody taking anybody down a bad road. No. And that's just what, how we got started. I'm not going to show you. Or I'm not going to condone somebody showing you something in this city or say, my God, that's the stupidest thing I've ever seen in my life. I'm going to say that's the stupidest thing I ever saw in my life. You know, I lost friends or who I thought were friends over that kind of comment. Yeah. Only because it was the stupidest thing I've seen in my life. Right. And uh, nine years ago, I lost my ability to have tact. Might not have had it really good before that. But... The deal is this, why would you hold back? You're going to share something that could get somebody else, your age, your likeness, your your abilities hurt, injured, or killed. Why? why? For sure. We, you know, this is not a a muscle event. You know, I've seen too much of that. I've seen too many demonstrations where the guy's trying to prove where he's had hair and things. And y'all know hair is way overrated. Uh, but the uh, what we want to do is share the ideas that come across the safe ones. And to do that, we ask you, step up, send it to us. Right. We're giving you one more. This is it. We're giving you one more outlet. I'm, I really don't know of another direction to go except to say, you got one? Remember when this crank thing cranked up? We didn't have Zoom. Then we did, and then we, and then we, and then we, and then we, and then we. Um, I don't think we've missed a boat yet. And uh, I have a special, I have a special girlfriend at, physical therapy. It's a very nice lady at 44 years old, the mentality of a four-year-old. And I throw a lot of things at, at, at Kristen. And I always think about what I can say to her and what she can say back as to how you relate to some people sometimes. 
if you keep it simple and you don't have an agenda, it works really well. So we're going to keep it simple and not have an agenda. You yeah, know? for sure. Hey, yeah. Eddie. So, hey. so, so we got a, we got a jam packed program tonight. We've already got some gallery on board, but we've got a we've got a demonstrator coming from the the the, the windy shores of Ireland. That we need to get to here pretty quick, and then oh, after the demo, uh, no band aids. Brenda has a a gimmick thing, a a program that she wants to enact with with the group. And then so she's going to have the floor after the demo to explain uh, this participation project um, idea that she has and see what kind of interest. Uh, well, we're, we're going well, to we're going, see. To, we're going um, to generate the interest because that's all we do. And I know somebody somebody on the first try is going to step right up and accept it. So is she going to show the new toolbox too? She well, I think she's upstairs. I don't think oh, she has right. a toolbox no. there. Maybe she maybe got a new toolbox with a really fine looking sticker on it, you know. Right. So, you have that on your toolbox, it doesn't get cluttered or dusty. Just yeah, so I think I think Doug Miller said uh he said it perfectly when he said uh makes the drawers work better. Yeah, it does. Right. It does. So let's get to it. We gotta yeah. go to the UK. Yeah, no, we're going to go to Ireland. We're going to go Ireland. To see uh, Steve Tindall. He was the gracious place. enough to. to That's where step my up. wife went. My, my regularly scheduled demonstrator. He fell ill at the last minute, literally the last minute. And Steve and I had been talking earlier, and and he was gracious enough to to jump in and pull one tonight. So, uh, as of a typical demos, it's Steve's demo. He's going to be demonstrating. Uh, any questions and comments? You know, let's let's wait and hold it till the end of his demonstration. Um, I am going to mute everybody. Steve, hey, you're to mute yourself. Good evening, everybody. Unmute yourself. Right on. Unmute yourself. Still muted. Is that working? Now it is. Gotcha. Yeah. My mouse doesn't like me. Uh oh. It's one of them tricky mice that runs around and you got to try and catch it. Just give me two seconds. I'm turning my heater back on because I just had to refill it. Captain Ed Captain Eddie ran my heat my oil out. Ah. <laughs> okay. Hello, I am Steve. For those of you that don't know me, there is a good few in that. I was just looking through the gallery and I saw a few people that I recognize. And um, I think I've actually brought a couple of new people in as well this evening. So thanks for joining. Um, so as um, Dane said, I was kind of thrown into it this evening. <laughs> um, I wasn't expecting to do a, a demo at all this evening, but uh, I'm going to try and demonstrate um, a movable um, snowman. Uh, so it's kind of a an idea that I kind of played with a few years ago. I've not made one for a while, but I said I'd give it a go. Um, and it's, uh, it, it's kind of a, a fun way of joining two pieces of wood and, and making them so that they move. It's a ball and socket kind of idea, basically, that, that you can do. And it makes an animated kind of character you can use it in all sorts of characters not just snowmen so we're going to try that this evening um yeah so without further ado i'll get on with it i i just will say that i have had no no professional training other than the uh university of youtube but my skills have all come from hours and hours of making mistakes behind the lathe over the last years so um <laughs> don't judge me Good preface. <laughs> okay, so I have um, a piece of uh, lightly sported beach. It's a nice piece of beach. Uh, we get a lot of beach here in Ireland. I'll also be wearing, because because it's spindle turning and uh, we're be between centers, I'm not doing any mad multi-axis stuff or anything this evening. I've decided not to. Um, I'm going to be wearing uh, safety goggles more than the visor be just because of the headgear and stuff like that that i'm using if i'd have known i had a bit more time i would have charged up my proper um button mic 
So just just so that if you see don't see me wearing a, a mask, that's the reason why. Okay. So oh, good. It's gog gog goggles over the top of glasses. So I'm going to just start off by rounding this off. Uh, the size of wood is, I think it's around about um, nine inches long, and it's about three inches square, roughly about that. I didn't measure it, but I'm just kind of guessing that. It doesn't really matter the size of the wood anyway when you're doing that kind of project. And we'll just round it off to start with. So for, if there's any newbies in the chat, uh, I'll try and cover everyone. There's a lot of people that are way more experienced than me, but um, for the newbies, the reason why I'm just putting the tool on the top of the wood is that if it starts jumping, it means it's lumping. It's got bumps and lumps in the wood still, and it's not smooth, and it will make the tool jump and you'll feel the vibration through the tool. So if I turn that off now, you'll see that there's still a flat spot somewhere just here, just a very small flat spot. The light's probably just drowning it out, but it is there, just about there, okay? Now this is a roughing tool, a spindle, spindle roughing gouge, never to be used on base plate work or bowl bowl turning purely because of the big wings on it it will teach you a lesson if you try and use it but it it can also be used it's a topic that's been coming up a lot in social media actually recently you can use it for a nice finishing tool depending on how you orientate the tool if you turn it just slightly 45 and you use it like a skew and just rub that bevel. You can get a nice smooth cut too. Still a few spirals there, but it's a much smoother cut than if you were just going straight in with it. And again, you can get that even smoother again if you just take your time. Great for shaping. If you've got big areas to shape, I'll use this a lot when I'm doing um, multi-axis turning um, and I've got big are areas I need to clean out. You can really get in there with the with the roughing gouge and, and take a lot of stuff away. Still got a slight flat area there. That'll do for now for what we're going to do this evening. Okay, so when I've got a piece of wood in the lathe like this, and I think it's going to be a bit longer than I actually need, I'll always put a tenon on both ends. Um, because when you come back to use it again later on, I mean, I probably will use it this evening, but when you come back to use a, the waste piece again, you'll already have a tenon already turned on it, so you can come back and use it and you don't have to put it between centers again and find where your center is and all that kind of rubbish you'll you'll have a tenon so if you've got a long piece of wood that you're just cutting down to size always put a, a tenon on both ends it's just a handy way of uh, storing your off cuts just clean up the edges And I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of do two thirds and a third cut here, I think, roughly. So that's where I'm gonna be cutting that. I'll put a tenon on this end. I already have my calipers set to the size of tenon that I need. Okay. 
on there. I'll sort the dovetail out in a second. Has anybody else ever twisted their caliper and been on the side like this? And you think that you've got your 10 on the right size, and then you realize that you're actually running it on the side of your, <laughs> and then you drop it down and you end up with a tiny little tenon. I have many times. Now I'm just bringing this to the size of the tenon that I need for my chop jaws. And then what I'll do is with my, with my parting tool, I'm just going to twist it like this. And when you twist it like that, it cuts in, goes in into the corner and it forms a dovetail for you. Now only do that if you know the size of your dovetail. You can do it other ways using your skew or you can make yourself, you can adapt a spare scraper into a dovetail cutter you can do it any any way you want that's just the way i do it okay so i've got both my tenors on there and now i'm going to cut this i'm going to give it a wiggle give myself some clearance only going to go to there no point risking it and having it snap and come off you can finish cutting it with a um with a saw, I just have a small little Japanese saw, pull saw, whatever you want to call it. Back off your live center, and then it won't grab your saw. There we go. And now I have two tenons on my wood, so I can use both pieces of wood. I'm going to start with, what place am I going to start with? I'm going, going to start by making the ball part of the ball and socket. Now, I presume that most of you know, if not all of you know what I mean by ball and socket. I have one that I just really quickly did before I came on this evening. Now, this is very loose. That camera's not working. Bear with me one second. This camera, for some reason, uh, decides to um, decides to turn itself off sometimes. Bear with me one second. Now oh, there we go. We're back in action. Let's look at that. Take it into the corner and give it a damn good talking to. <laughs> so what I mean by a ball and socket is I just did this very quickly. So I just this is a, a roughly a snowman, very rough snowman's head. So we can we can orientate the hat and we can move the hat without it actually falling out. But this one's a bit too loose. I did it very quickly just to see if I can remember how to do it. Um, but basically what it is, it's a ugh, it's a friction fit ball and socket that you just push in there and it gives you a way of jointing your wood and kind of you can orientate it however you want so if that's up on a shelf you can kind of have, have the hat tipped but you can also we're going to try tonight now i haven't done it for a long time so if i mess it up you'll still get the concept we're going to try and do it so that the head can move in the body as well do you know, so you can move the head and we can maybe move the hat as well. But it's all, it's a nice little toy for kids to play with. Um, I kind of do them along with the spinning top snowmen that I showed last week as well. So we're, that's kind of what we're aiming for. Very cool. If we mess it up, I'll sing for you. I've heard that. Please don't mess it up. <laughs> Think oh, positive, on. Steve. You're not going to. You're going to do it perfectly first time. <laughs> Ruby has spoken. When Ruby speaks, it's the truth. 
or you're in trouble. One of the two. Okay, put my chuck in. It's just a Nova chuck that I have. And we're going to go with the... Yeah, we're going to go with the small part first. This is where Steve finds out he's done after all that talk and he's done... Oh, no, that's good. Oh, I did have the caliper set. I did a live on YouTube the other night and I had my caliper set to a different jaws that I had in my chuck previously and I cut all my tenons and then none of them fit. Go figure. Never had that happen before. <laughs> yeah. Lion right. Nick is on fire. Okay. So um, now I've got autofocus on this camera. If it's Dane, if it keeps jumping and out, will you tell me and I'll take the autofocus off? Okay, um, will do. Just, yeah, it's just that sometimes it, it helps a lot more when autofocus is on. It'll, it'll stop the blare. Okay, so we're going to. Um, we're going to make a, um, basically it's a tenon, but it's a round ball socket tenon. Uh, we're going to guess, guesstimate the size. I'm going to start off with my parting tool to bring it down to the size that I think I roughly want. I'm going to move my tail stock out the way because that really hurts your elbow. We all know that. And I'm going to move my tool rest away from a possible twist and it hit in the chuck i'd rather if it did move and i put too much pressure on it it hit the wood than hit all this metal that's spinning okay i think there's enough light there isn't there i don't need to put the i think the light will wash it out yeah yeah it's much better without okay so i'm gonna i'm just gonna bring this down to so we're, we're working on, I think what we'll work on here is we'll work on the hat going into the, into the head at the moment. And then we might, if we have time, we'll do the same with the body, uh, the head going into the body. But we'll do the hat first. I'm going to get rid of this piece just here. Now, you don't want to make this too long. You can adjust it as you go along. I think I'm going to go smaller than that. Probably going to go about there. There's no rules to the size of it. I suppose, really, it depends on how wide you want the rim of your hat um, later on. So you want, to, you want to give yourself enough leeway to be able to put the rim of your hat on later on once you've got the ball and socket made so i'm just going to go with that for now now this is a beading parting tool people just call them a parting tool they're a beading parting tool they're just like a little quarter inch skew you can shape with them so i mean you can do your shaping with that too i probably use my parting tool a lot more than i really should do because I'm lazy and I'm just going to form a ball. And if I think I need a bit more room, I'll take a bit more wood away. I've got plenty to spare. And the ball that we're going to form is going to have a kind of recess, an undercut at the back of it. I'll bring the other camera up in a second so you can see a side view. Now you can use your gouge. Not a problem. You can use your skew. You can use a knife and fork if you want. I really don't mind. It's your workshop. It's your tools. And give it a little bit more speed. And I'm just going to finish that undercut just there. And just to get that last bit, because the back of my um, 
parting tool is touching on the side of the wood. I'm just going to use the gouge to do that last little uh, recess. And you're literally just forming a bead. You'll see why you do a bead rather than a sphere or a ball in a second. When I started doing these, I tried getting perfect spheres on the end. I was spending ages trying to get the sphere. And then I realized that when it was actually in, in the socket, it was actually fit in here and all of this there was no point of being there because you want you want the whole thing to twist anyway so you don't need the very end to be there so you're chopping off that that part of the sphere anyway all you want is kind of a nice steady turn this gouge could do with a sharpen really it'll do for tonight I'm going to clean that front edge off. Yeah. So I'm I'm going to leave it at that. I'm not going to sand it. I'm not going to sand it. I'm going to leave it at that for now. Just at that that size. Okay. I'll show you from the side view, so you can see it. So you can see the the outline of that is that it's undercut. It drops down at the back. And that's what's going to hold it in place in the socket when you push it in. Okay, so that's the kind of um, profile that you need when you're turning these. Okay, so that's all I'm going to do with that one for now. We're going to take that off. And we're going to swap it over to the the other part. Put that over there where I find it. We'll put this back in. And I don't know why we all do that twist the chuck and tighten both sides because I, I think that deep down we all know that if you just twist one of them it's still going to tighten it it's just a wood turner's thing isn't it I think I think it's a myth that it actually does anything for the tightening okay so now I'm going to clean up this front edge my tool rest down a slight bit. Use my gouge again. Doesn't matter if we've got a slight, well, there is a slight move on that, but that we can get that again later on. Wrong gouge. Okay, so I've just cleaned off that where we cut it with the saw. And now we're going to use our vernier calipers. And we're going to take the very widest part of this um, socket ball, sorry, that we've, we've made. And I always kind of put it down the center and I put it that way rather than trying to get work out exactly where the middle is and push it down this way I'll just go down there and I'll get I'll get my perfect width then just like that and then we're going to mark it 
on this side. Just like that. And I always take my pencil because I'm old and my eyes don't work as well as I used to. And I just highlight that so that I can see it. And then we just start hollowing that out. You can use any tool to hollow whatever your preference is. Now I'm aware that A, this is sported wood, so it won't be as strong as um, unsported wood. So I'm aware of that. I'm also aware that I'm quite a distance from my chuck. So any pressure, any sideway pressure on this could pull it out of the chuck. So I've got to be very aware of all that and take light cuts and not try and take too much out at a time. Now, once I get a dome, cut in there, I'm not going all the way to my line, okay? And I always want to be able to see my line. I never want to clean my the, the, the line that I've just put on there away, okay? I am going to, let me do this because... I'm going to start getting in the way of of that camera. So I'm going to just bring this round there with me. All my cameras move. So I should be able to get that where you can see it. Okay. Right. okay so I'm going to... Sorry, was that, some... was, was that a question or... You text me? I just looked right over the text. I looked over to go. You must have just sent it. Okay, so I'm going to come in and cut and start forming an undercut inside the rim of where my pencil line is. Just cutting into the behind it. Because what's happened? What's going to happen is our ball is going to lock into this eventually when we uh, when we clean all this out. Now I'm going to use my very. I've got a very special. Um, depth measurer for doing this job about that deep okay we're about halfway there in depth Now, because I have the tool, I'll get down to about that point. And because I have the tool, I'm going to use it. Uh, I have this. Um, I don't think you can get these in the States. I'm not sure if Simon Hope ships this, these tools into the States. Um, but there are. This is the Simon Hope mini hollower. I'll hold it back here so you can see it. It's the Simon Hope mini hollower and it's just a, a six mil cupped cutter and uh they're really nice they they're really nice cutter they can be very aggressive um if uh, w when you're new to using it the trick is that you don't just go straight in with it you always want to keep it at kind of a 45 degree angle Let me just put my tool rest down just slightly
But what I like about this is that it's a cutter all the way around. So when you want to do a recess cut like this or an undercut, you can get right in there without too much trouble. Now I know I'm way too big at the rim here still, but I'm just getting my depth and my shape to start with. And then I'll start refine, refining the front lip. Okay, so I'm going to offer up the other part of this just to see where we are. Okay, I can see. I can see that we've still got a bit to take out before this lip will go in. So we're almost there, but not quite. Nearly never did, as they say. Again, I want to, I've got two of these depth, depth gauges out there. Got a little bit more to clean out. So I'm going to get my depth first. And then start taking out my, my shape and bringing the curve all the way around. Okay, that's a nice shape there. It's a nice smooth cut. Now, this is where I'm going to start trying to get my ball to fit in the socket. Again, just want to do a last check on my depth. I could probably go a little bit deeper, but let's get our joint fitting first. So I'm going to go back to my gouge now. so that I can just sneak up on this. I'm going to just take a little bit at a time off this front edge. Now, if you turn it sideways, Oh, you can probably see it there actually on that camera. If you turn it sideways, you can see the width a lot better and whether it's going to fit in there with a little bit of manipulation. It's pretty much the same rules. As when you're fitting a friction lid. Try it. Turn it, try it, turn it, and then go, oh, when you made it too big. <laughs> A little bit more. Still got my pencil line, as you can see. We're getting close. I'm just going to take the back of that out a little bit more just so I've got the right depth. Oh, 
Okay, that's about where I want to be, I think. Yeah, it's just starting to... Do you know that friction... We all know that friction fit squeak that you just start getting as you're pushing it in. That's that's what I'm starting to get. So I've still got a slight ridge there that I want to clean up. I'm happy with the, the outer rim. So now it's just a matter of cleaning up the rest of the inside and getting it fully to depth where I want it. I don't want to touch that front edge at all now. Now, when you're forming this shape inside, you've always got to be kind of creating a curve. Never go straight in like you're hollow in a box. See how we are there. That feels quite nice. Here's our fancy depth gauge. Depth gauge. Oh yeah, we're good on that. Okay. So you notice I haven't done any sanding, and this is why. Indeed. So I want to go this, I want this to go very slowly. Well, when I say slowly, we're talking probably around about 600. You can go slower if you want, depending on how strong you are. And what we're going to do is we're going to start this friction fit and we're going to burn this in and we're going to let go. Okay. And now we've got a joint there that, that moves around and is quite loose, but when you pull it, there's a lot of resistance to try and pull it out. Okay. So you'll get a little burn mark on there. Okay. You can get that. You can get that with sandpaper later on if you wanted to. But um, now I could have, I'll put that on the overhead camera. I could have gone a little bit deeper with that. And I still can. I still pop be able to pull it out. I can still go a bit deeper than that and try and close this up. But there's not really any point because even when it's closed, you still need to orientate your wood. And so if it's completely closed up, if it's completely closed up, it's not going to be able to go anywhere anyway. So the idea is that it kind of moves around and flops around and you can put it where you want. Okay, so next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to twist. This and I'm going to put my tail stock back in the bit that hurts your elbow, and we're going to put this back up into center. And it should, with a little bit of pressure from the tail stock, should run true just like that. My heater didn't. I was just wondering why I was starting to get cold. My heater didn't come back on yet. Uh oh. There we go. It's back on. It's turning on again now. It's never good when you start shivering. No, it's not. Especially around the machinery. Yeah. Okay. So now we're between centers again. Well, I mean, we're in the chuck, but um, we're lined up with our. Um, tail stock again and now we can start shaping and doing what we want with with our snowman or whatever character um you're doing i've done a couple of um you know, the nut crack nutcrackers <laughs> you can make the kind of nutcrackers this way as well kind of do a nutcrackers hat and you can shape your nutcracker and you can have his hat that moves and stuff like this all sorts of uh ways you can do it. i did um i made a buzz Lightyear replica 
once many many years ago and all his arms and legs uh moved in the same way as this i made little mini uh ball sockets so there you go i don't know if you call them diff something different in the states but i'm sure you know what i mean by a ball socket i've just made one anyway so <laughs> yeah that's exactly what we call them too steve okay cool all right so this just through friction and pressure from the tailstock those two pieces of wood should be solid enough for you to turn the shapes that you want so what i'm going to do is i'm going to make this so it's a hat now what you can do what i've done before is i've turned i'll, I'll demonstrate in a second i'll explain it in a second when i do it because it'll be easier so i'm going to use my um my roughing gouge just to take a lot of the uh access wood away from here on the top of this i'm still going to leave my um my tenon on the end there for now just in case i have to i change my mind or i always i always leave the tenon as the last thing i remove so i'm just doing a push cut with my roughing gouge. This is what I was saying about you can shape with a roughing gouge. It's just, it's not just for making things round. You can, you can shape with a roughing gouge and you can use that wing just to take it away. And I'm just getting a rough shape of a hat, deciding on how big I want to go. I'll get my parting tool now. And I'll decide how wide I want my rim. I'm going to go a bit faster so that this cuts a little bit easier. Um, I'm going to go I think I'm going to go do you know what? I might do an undercut on this and put a curve on the inside of the hat so that it matches the curve of the head. So I'm going to leave it a little bit thick for now. And we might pop that hat off again in a second. I think I'm actually going to go down quite a bit here. Probably to about there, actually. Like I say, I haven't done one of these for a long, long time. That next project always comes along and you move on from and you never seem to go and you never seem to go back to the things that you usually do. I think that's quite a nice that's kind of a uh Charlie and the chocolate factory type 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 of hat. I like that. And I'm getting quite a nice finish off the tool on that, off the off the roughing gouge. So that's that's quite a nice finish. It's just as nice um, finish as you get from any any of your other spindle gouges. I'm just going to turn my gouge just slightly, 45, and I'm going to shear cut rather than straight. And there you go. That's a nice finish on that now. All right, I'm happy with the, the basic outer shape of that hat. You can add, add a little band if you wanted to, and you can, but just for the demonstration tonight, I'm not going to mess about with it too much. I'm going to round off the top of my rim. Again, with the beading part and tool. do for that 
And now this is where I've got to decide whether I'm going to um, pull the hat back off again and dome the underneath of the, the rim of the hat. And before I do that, I think I'm going to start shaping the top of the head and we can go by that then. And if we want to, we can pull the hat back off again and, and put it back in. That's why I never took my tenon off and we can we can have a bit of a play on the underneath of the hat. So we'll shape it and see, do we want to take that gap away, hollow the underneath of the hat so that it curves around the, the top of the head, if that makes sense. I think it makes sense. Makes sense in my head anyway. Uh, gouge again. Let's just take a little bit of the, let's start shaping the head just a little bit. Let's reduce it a bit with the parting tool first. I have a really bad habit and I'm trying to get out of it of, um, I'll just show you on this camera. The other camera is going to be in, but it is worth saying because I'm always telling myself off for doing it. I'll pick up one tool that I'm going to use and I'll put the other tool under my arm and I'll start using it. And then I'll take that one and I'll put that one under my arm and I'll use that. And the trouble is with that is that if you really get into what you're doing, you tend to forget that you've got a tool under your arm and you relax and it slides down and it falls down on top of the lathe or it hits a piece of wood and then next thing it goes flying off or you spin round and you hit hit the chuck with it under your arm and that. Don't do that. I'm really trying my best not to do it. I almost did it there. Always put your tools down and only have one tool in your hand. It's a really bad habit that I picked up and um, I am slowly learning not to do it. I will actually tell myself off for doing it. So I'm just reducing the size. Change your camera. Can you change your, thanks Brenda. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah. So I'm just reducing the size of the width of the head that I want. Remembering that we have hollowed this out and we've also scooped the inside and done an undercut. So we, we could get quite thin if we don't think about it along this edge. So we're only gonna reduce it just slightly. Now I have a, a particular design of snowman that I always go with. I always do a head and I always turn like a little scarf underneath the head, a bead. I can show you on the spinning top ones that I've done. This is kind of my preferred shape of a snowman. So I'll do the hat, the head, I'll do turn a little scarf. And then I'll do a body, different shape bodies. But um, and then I'll pyro designs into this scarf or you can color it. And then you draw the rest of the scarf out with your pyro onto the body. And it looks as if the whole thing's flowing out. So I always kind of turn a little bead at the bottom of the head rather than actually putting a cloth a cloth um scarf on so that's that's starting to shape the head there looks a bit like a lego um lego head at the moment but we can fix that Remember that we've hollowed this as well. So our walls could be thin. Just just bear in mind that when you're shaping the depth that you've gone. And if I can remember the measurement, it was about that. <laughs> you could end up cutting your head off. There's no rule to shape. So I'm going to leave that like that. And now I'm going to pull my hat off and I'm going to see how much room I have on the top to round this off a bit more. And then we're going to work on the bottom of the hat again. And we might hollow a little bit deeper just to see, can we close this gap up and get it to kind of orientate around the top of the head a little bit more. 
that makes sense. Now, sometimes, sure sometimes these can be a bit. Ah, there we go. We got call it. Call that tight. Pardon? Would you call that tight? I'd call that a snug fit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we'll change the camera again. And um we'll shape we'll shape this front edge. You can see I've still got quite a bit of thickness on this front edge, so I can round the top of the head quite nicely. Um and I am quite thick on the walls still. I've probably got about uh just under a quarter of an inch, I'd say. Um, so we have got some room to, to play with, some wiggle room, as they say. So I'm just going to bring the top of my head around here to start with. Because we know that our rim is right for, for a, as we called it, a snug fit. Okay. And then we're going to shape this because we know that we've got plenty of thickness there now that we didn't know when, when our hat was on. And I just want to get a top shape. And I want to just work that in as a curve. I could probably get a little bit more there actually, coming this way. Go. Steve, how thin can you go before you have to worry about it splitting the wood when you put it back in? So um, there's no right answer to that, but I would say it depends on the wood you're using. Obviously, if you're using a good solid hard wood, there's less likely of it splitting and cracking. Um, but this is a sported wood, so I don't want to go too thin because we all know that sported wood um, comes back to uh, to kick you in the ass. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yes, it can. <laughs> so um, it, it's to your, your discretion. I mean, most of us know that when, when we're turning the wood, we know how much tolerance it can take. I mean, we all make mistakes, I know. But I know that this is slightly softer beach because it's sported. So I'm not going to make my walls too thick. Now, also, if you're using um, a wood that could be splintery and could crack, um, obviously that could be brittle as well. So when you push your head in, uh, your joint together, it could splinter and break as well. So just, you know, it all depends on, on the wood. Okay, gotcha. so that's that. Thank you. No problem. Is that Billy, was it? I think I recognize yeah. the voice. Yep, it was. So I'm just, I'm going to, I think I am going to go a little bit deeper. Yeah, I am going to go just a small bit deeper and I'm going to try and um, get this joint to close up a bit. And then we're going to put the, are we okay for time, uh, Dan? Just, I don't yeah, want to be. Yeah, you're good. Okay, cool. No worries at all. Great job. So I'm just going to go a little bit deeper just to see, can we close up that? that gap just a small bit again i'm not i'm not going anywhere near my front rim that's where our joint is made that's where we get our strength
Now, what you can do with these as well, if you make them a nice snug fit, and you give it the illusion that you can't pull it apart, so if someone gets it like I just did and gives it a good yeet and it doesn't come apart as easy as they think, they tend to leave it alone. So you could make it a secret box compartment as well. So it's it's a toy, but you can actually get the lid off and you've got like a little secret compartment. Kids love secret compartments. Adults like secret compartments. What am I saying? Yeah, I was going to say, I, can I count as a big kid? Yeah. I've seen some of these um, puzzle boxes that are going around online, and I'm like, I want one. Okay. Let's, um, let's do a proper depth. Uh you know, let's do it properly. Almost like we know what we're doing. Okay, yeah, I've got some good depth there now. So we should now. This is where Billy's cursed me. He was just teasing. No, I didn't. You got this. There we go. That's... We're in there now, and we've closed that gap up a little bit now. Let me put the overhead camera so you can see it. So we've closed that gap. It's not completely closed, but it's better than it was. Okay, and it will it will move a lot. We'll get a lot of movement. But what you do is, the secret of this is you'll you'll think, oh well, you've got that piece of wood. You can see that piece of wood there. That's going to take take the look of it away. But what you do is. You can paint that piece of wood there black. And what, what it'll do is it'll look like a shadow. It'll look like it's disappeared and just a dark part, you know, as if it's a gap. So you can okay. have your head, so you can have your hat straight or you can orientate your hat so it's sideways or any way you want, you know. So we'll leave that there like that now. No, we're not. We're going to pull it out again. We're going to keep to what I said we're going to do. We're going to take this back out. And we're going to put this in. And we're going to see if we can just hollow out the underside of the rim of the hat just slightly. So when it is pushed in, we might be able to get it to roll around the top of the head a little bit more and not have that as big a gap. Now, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It all depends on how the spigot's done. That's an old-fashioned word, isn't it? Spigot. Yeah, that it is. Not many of us use it anymore. <laughs> hey, Steve, there's a, there's a question. Would waxing uh, the joint, would that help um, pulling it in and out? Or would the wax just wear off like on other applications? Wax would help, but the worry is that the wax would also allow it to pop out a lot easier. That would be my worry is that if you put any kind of finish on that, I tend to not put any finish on this. In fact, I'll just, most of the time, I'll just leave it tall finish. I, I won't even sand it because that slight roughness of the joint is what gives it that friction and hold. Okay. Um, Cause it doesn't really matter anyway. It's not something you can see once it's pushed together. Um, okay, so I'm going to just, I'm just going to hollow out just the underneath. Now you can see the sporting in this now that you can see a slight punkiness in the, in the end grain. We'll try and get that cleaned up a little bit. And this part here, you can do whatever you want to it. So you can, you can even hollow that out a little bit now because there's, that's not doing anything. It's this out, outer rim, rim that gives it the snug fit. And then it's this just front top of the ball so this cent central part you can do whatever you want you can put a little design you can put your logo a hidden logo or anything you want in there i'm just going to see if i can clean that little bit of uh punkiness out of there just by i'm going to spin it quite fast and see if we can get a nice cut off of it
I'm thinking not if I know beach. Oh, not too bad. We got it. Right, let's try and clean the underneath of this just a little bit. Now, obviously, you don't want to take too much of this out because the more you take away from the the rim, the deeper it's going to go into the joint. So I'm just curving it just slightly. And now I can just take this front edge off as well to take the sharp edge. Don't want any lawsuits from parents. There we go. That's actually cleaned up that punkiness now quite nicely. Still got a tiny bit here, you know, and you can sand that if you wanted to. I'm not, just for the sake of the demonstration. And now if we pop the body that I've lost back on there it is sorry the head we'll see <laughs> i just that that just proves that it's <laughs> that's fun isn't it you could do that all night <laughs> <laughs> so now we're going to knock that back on there we go and see, that will orientate a little bit now without, we've got a little bit more movement without making this gap too big. Yeah, it looks great. Okay, so now we can leave it that way around. And because we've got our center point still marked in the center of our tenon, we can bring our tail stock up again and we can centralize it again. That should run true because all our centers are all, we've always been working to our centers, never changed anything. A little bit of pressure on there causes a nice good friction fit there. And now we can start shaping the rest of our body. Now, we're not going to tonight, but if I was to decide to do a, a ball joint between the two, between the head and the body, you'd, you'd go ahead and do exactly the same thing now. You'd split it again. You'd turn your... Um, I hate using male, male and female because it's the wrong term now. That you're, You'd... Your external first, and then you turn your internal on the body, um, and you do exactly the same thing, friction fits and uh, that we did with the hat and the head. And that way, the body, you can twist the body slightly and twist the hat, and that way you're getting the whole thing to bend and twist and orientate wherever you want. And then um, if you do an American snowman, you've got three balls that you can do it with. <laughs> 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 okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do my – my normal um scarf and then body um and when i've done that we'll take some questions and stuff there's a lot of debate about the two balls versus three balls question <laughs> yeah we won't go there tonight <laughs> so i don't know if you can hear there's a slight i'll put my mic to it can you get that sound yeah we hear it yeah so that is just because it's a friction fit, I'm sure when you put friction lids on and you put them back on the lathe to, to true up the outside, you'll get that slight squeak or noise. It's yeah. nothing to worry about. It's just where the two pieces of wood are kind of settling in and, and moving into place. So now I'm going to, I'm just going to decide on the side of scarf. I'm going to, 
I think I'm going to make his head just a little tiny bit bigger, a little bit deeper. So I'm going to bring my parting tool in here like this. And I'm just twisting the parting tool just slightly so that I'm getting the same shape as the head. So I'm not going straight in and then digging the corner of the tool into the, the shape that I've already formed. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to use it like a skew. And I'm going to make it fit into the top of what's going to be the scarf. Nice and gently. There we go. And now I'm going to decide on the width of my scarf. I'm going to go probably around about there. I want to go all the way down with my parting tool because if I do, I'm going to have an awkward, weird, flat transition between the scarf and the body, and I don't want that. So I stop just high of where I actually want to cut it. I normally like the top of my body, when it's curving, to come down and meet where you think the head would be in the center of the scarf. So I've just gone as to the depth, just above the depth I want to go, and then I'll get the rest with the gouge or even the skew once we start shaping. So I'm just going to shape the body now. Bring this in here. Just roll in my gouge. And I'm going to exaggerate this just so I can show you what I mean by the flat spot. You can see that flat spot just there. If I went all the way down with that flat spot, it the transition just wouldn't look right. I'm, I'm a sucker for fine detail when I'm doing stuff. And if I was to make that and I had that flat spot there and my body didn't match into the bottom of the scarf properly, I'd be looking at it forever. And I'd be saying, why did I do that? When, if you just think about it just for a second, pull back on your on your parting tool or the tool that you're using and, and do your final cut into shape then. So now I can come back with my gouge now on that flat spot and I can bring it and I can roll it. And I can bring it in right down so that we get a curve going into the bottom of my scarf like this now I've got a, quite an acute point this is my um, multi-axis skew so I, uh, gouge so I can get right in there with the point and form the transition just like that right in there I'm almost going 90 degrees when I go in there. Now, if you don't have that real acute fingernail grind, you can go in with your skew. And you can use the point of your skew and you can just transition in like this. And you can get right in there then. And then you get a nice tight joint between body and scarf. And then you can just shape the rest. Shape of your body is entirely up to you. Transition. All this so it's nice and smooth. Now, some people would be happy with that. Where it's just flat, straight like that. I like to put like a little bit of a 
a little bit of a curve. Do you know what? I normally use my um, roughing gouge to do that because you can get a nice steady shape. Just rock your roughing gouge from side to side. I really think they should change the name of a roughing gouge. Change it to a giant spindle gouge or something like that. There we go. I'm just it all make it all look snow like a nice smooth shape. Just like that. It's just a subtle a subtle difference, but it's uh a difference nonetheless. Now I'm just gonna get my thinner gouge and just try and clean that up with the there we go, that's better. That's nicer. There we go. Now the Scarf sticking out a little bit too far, so we're going to take a bit of the width away from that. Now, again, before I take this down to the depth that I'm going, to, you can have fun with the shape of the scarf too. So you could just do a bead if you want. I've done different shaped scarves. You could just do a bead like that. This isn't going to be the finished shape because I've still got to go down. So just a general bead like that. Or if you want to, you can do a bigger bead at the bottom. Do like a little cut into here. And a, a shallower bead at the top. Like this and it just makes it look more like a, a scarf that's kind of sitting on top of the like it's all kind of dropped down and you know cloth like there's different ways you can play with the uh in fact you know what i think i'm quite happy with that i'll just take a little bit more thickness off of that there I think with this one, I will probably let my son Robbie finish it at the weekend and he can decorate it then. So I'm going to go a big bead at the bottom and then just bring it round to a small bead at the top. And it just gives it like a nice little shape. And again, just so that I've got transition, I'm going to bring my head and just bring the point of my tool just into the top of the scar to make that look as if it's a, a separate ring, just like that. And then you'd sand it up. Obviously, you'd flatten up your, your base. But, sorry, curve your base so that it's not just a big flat bum on it. And then you would re remove your tenons. You can do that separately. Uh, so you'd part it again, take off your tenons. Um, your chuck could eat, might might fit in the into the the joint that you have at the top. If not, you can make a jam chuck. I'm not going to take the tenons off this one because I I need to do all the sanding and everything, and I can get it finished ready for Robbie to uh, to finish it. But normally you just take your tenons off and clean it up, and that's that. Uh, let me just show you just quickly before I'm going to be sanding it away. You can see how that scarf just looks like just that tiny little detail just makes it look more like a scarf than a bead. Um, and I'm just going to just going to demonstrate quickly just with the pencil. Um, a blunt pencil. Let me just sharpen it. what you do with a scarf. So I'd come along with the pyro 
and I'd probably run the pyro around the scarf like this. Just randomly burning it around in hoops to give it a, a shape. Or you can run colour around it. And then I pick a, a point where it looks cool where the face is going to be. Normally it'll be where there's a grain like this, this grain orientation here. And I'd I'd pyro my my face in now you can put fancier things i've got little carrots that i've turned as well that i could pop into there and then you bring your, your either your, your black marker pen or your pyrography and you bring your scarf down like this you draw it into the wood like this, so it goes into there. Bring your second one like this. Put your little tassels. And then you'd do your stripes to match what you've done round the top. And then the scarf kind of looks all part of it. And you don't have to worry about it having a cloth scarf that's going to get tatty in over the years. Um, it'll either be coloured. You can colour all this if you want to. And then you burn your buttons down here. And you can put any details you want into the hat as well. And then when you take it all off and you've taken off your tenons, You have a snowman that you can uh, wind that back out. You have a snowman that your kids can play with and orientate the hat and play with and move around and just have it looking different. It's just, it's a movable object, which kids, kids love rather than just a, a stagnant ornament on the shelf I, I just like the idea of christmas that you've got your grandkids or your kids running around and they're picking things like this up and they're playing with them just like the spinning top the spinning top snowmen where they pull them apart and they're spinning the spinning tops and and then you know you can do all sorts of things with different it's just a different kind of snowman and like i say if you color that black when that hat is orientated like this at an angle you can even see with the shadow there you, you never really notice Right. The joint. And that's great my job, Steve. snowman. That, 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 is, great that idea. is a great that is a great idea. Oh my god. Oh, cool. Great cool. Demo, Steve. Move this out the way. Yeah, well, thanks, Steve. Well done, Steve. Demo. Thank you. So, so hey, folks, if you have any questions or, or comments, uh now's the time that uh, to pick Steve's brain on it. Absolutely. And not just on the project, on anything. Do you try well, and undercut the scarf at all? Yeah, I that when I was doing the transition, that's what I was talking about. The the transition. Um, you can see, I've I've just undercut the scarf there. Now you can take you can take the skew, and you can go even further in there if you wanted to. Um, but I have I have undercut top and bottom of that scarf to make it look like it's a a separate item okay. to the rest of the but you can go as much as you want i mean i would i would honestly spend a lot more time doing this if i was doing it at home do you know you know if i was doing it not on demonstration sure. I'd, I'd probably get in there a lot more um this would probably i would have probably messed around and made this sit further down on the head and slide around a little bit but that's something that when you start doing this you can start um experimenting and getting things to fit differently you know i mean you, you can even you can even make these the same as the the spinning top ones so you can you I, i'm not sure i think you all saw that saw the spinning top ones last week but basically the idea is it's it's a box there's a spinning top inside and you can put the lid on and then the spinning top spins on top of the hat and that's another toy and <laughs> but what another but what you can do is but what you can what you can do is you can orientate that hat so it's angled 
and you can put a spinning, you can make that into a box as well. And then that means that your spinning top would be spinning at an angle on, on the hat as well, oh, you know, depending on, depending on how you curve it. So yeah. it's, it's another part of the toy. You can add, you can put both ideas together and make it a really kind of interactive toy for kids, you know? Wow. Very cool. Hey, hey. May, may may I ask a question? Absolutely. Go ahead, Al. Um, now when when you were making the friction uh, fit and uh, the the lathe was spinning, and uh, you were forcing it, and 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 we we all saw a, a, a jerk, a jerk. Okay. As it popped now, in, now, yeah. Now, 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 I, I'm going to ask you a question. Now after that, we had a gap. Uh, so in other words. You were not deep enough, and as that bottom bottomed out, that's what kicked, right? Well, it, it, yeah, it, yeah. Is that what made more of the? I mean, you you were almost there with the the two outside diameters, male, yeah. female, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. So when it kicked, and then no, then you know, you you made it deeper. So that's probably the reason that made it kick, right? So in yeah. other words. Just make sure that you're deep enough and make sure that you're wide enough. And the only thing to be concerned about are, are, are the two male and the female uh, components, which is... Yeah, and to be honest with you, when, when you do do the friction, and it, even if it does kick, it's, it's hard to describe. It almost makes you let go as you're doing it. It's not, it won't yeah, allow yeah, you to yeah, hold on to yeah, it. Just, yeah. Just like, so, spinning, um, yeah. just like spinning I, it with a, a, yeah, a worm screw, of course. I actually I actually got this idea from, um, I watch a lot of um, Indian wood turners because they amaze me with the tools they use. You're, you're, they, you're I mean, right. they, they, you're turn, right. they turn with their feet and they turn with hook yep. tools and they turn yep. with yep. things yep. that just yep. look like knives and they just amaze me. Yep. But yep. Um, yep. I was watching an Indian guy and he was making, um, he was making batons that um, the army used for throwing. Do you know when they're, when they're doing their yep. tricks and stuff and they, they throw these batons and the batons come in three parts. And that's how he how he was jointing them. He was turning a little mortise and tenon into them. And then he was holding them and he was friction fitting them. And I, because he didn't have a long enough lathe, basically, he, he put it in and he was friction fitting it. So he, he had he had the first stick in his chuck. He took away his tailstock and he friction fit the first bit, boom, and it went in and it kept spinning. And it was whipping quite a bit in his hand. He was holding it and it was flapping about in his hand. And then he got the third section and he put that in and pushed it and popped that in. And the whole thing was spinning in his hand. And he went, boop, and he kicked the, the lathe off <laughs> and pulled it off. And, and, all, and all three sections then were, because the way they use them is they flex, but they're still solid joints. So when they throw it, it kind of flexes it's hard sure, uh, you'll have to sure, look it up sure. but um but, but but that's how he was doing the friction fitting on it and i thought but, wow but, that's but a really I'm cool idea is, what i'm saying is uh tonight that that you it needed it needed to be a little bit deeper right because yes yeah uh, yeah exactly but, yeah I mean, it, it did kick your arm and i think if it was deeper that that would not have kicked like like oh, I think you're probably was, right yeah yeah that's that's what i thought um, yeah, that was, hey, that was beautiful. Thank you so much. What an idea. <laughs> My Thank God. You. What a rabbit hole this is. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's one thing after another. I can't throw away a little log anymore because I can make a face on it. Thanks, Ruby. <laughs> <laughs> but that, I mean, that you, can, you, you can use that idea. You can use that idea on so many. Like I said, I, I made a, a replica Buzz Lightyear um, toy and all his joints were done exactly the same as that. They were friction fit joints and, and they all moved. Um, the, his head moved, his body uh, moved on, on his hips. So you, you can use that idea, that friction fit for all sorts of ideas and toys and things that you make. So. Very good. Hey Steve, if you, if you turn the, uh, the socket in the uh, ball around, in the head and made it the opposite direction, then, then you wouldn't have the gap, right? You know, if you say that again, sorry, 
Well, if you if you switch it around, you know, right now you've got the the ball on the hat, right? Yep. Okay. If you turned it around and made part of the head to where okay, it would I fit inside you, yeah. the hat. Yeah. And yeah, then you wouldn't true. have the gap problem. Yeah, that's true. And then you could do a, an undercut on the rim a lot deeper. Right, you could make more of an undercut. In. Right, yeah. And yeah. it wouldn't matter, I suppose, how much you cut into the depth of the hat either. Right. Because, no, just have a ball yeah. for a head and it fits yeah. on the head and it's a sock. Yeah. A socket fit yeah. onto the head. That's true, yeah. Yeah. And that sounded like a demo. That sounded like a demo. <laughs> it does. It does sound like a demo. Yeah. You can come yeah, and show sure does. Bob, and Bob's done those. Bob, and Bob will probably videotape him doing it. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think Steve did a great job here. <laughs> Thank you. It was I, 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 I did do a great job. I'm not, not a professional. Not a profe I'm not a professional dem demonstrator, so it's um, it's all it's all YouTube learned. Even the demonstrating is all done oh. on YouTube. So it's, it, was, yeah. it was great, very, 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 very enjoyable. Believe very me, it was very enjoyable. Yeah. Very good. Nice job. Thank all you. right. Very enjoyable. Once again, thank thank you very much, Steve, uh, for demonstrating tonight, and thank you very much very for the, uh, giving you two hours notice to figure something out to do for me. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's let's oh, swing geez. back to Captain Eddie here real quick for for a recap of things, and then we're going to go to Brenda with a uh, participation idea. So Eddie, let's come back to you. Wow, you talk about opening a can of worms. Just did. I mean, you know, just now, Bob Grinstead took it and flipped it clean around that quick. I'm what I'm really shocked. I'm really shocked that Billy Burt didn't jump in there and you know manipulate yeah. a little but billy i know you're thinking i know you're thinking billy oh i already have my ideas ed well, all right, all right. I, I, I trust us air force guys got to stick together right billy uh you but, got it <laughs> hey folks we've had a great time here tonight we're going to go to brenda band-aid brenda's no band-aid brenda which is our <clears throat> one of the members of our group that gets involved and you can get involved too Tonight we introduce you to our brand new web our 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 new circulation of format, which is called our newsletter, and that's coming back in a different format, and it's coming back from you, our membership. We have a new editor, Joaquin, and we also have a bunch of other folks joining that team. But there are open chairs in this team, folks. And as we said earlier, if you weren't here, but you can get all on recap. Uh, there's chairs for you. So if you'd like to be involved in our newsletter, jump on board. If you want to be involved in our new website, jump on board. If you want to be involved in the production of this meeting. It's This is an open club, folks. It's, there's, there's nothing to be gained except knowledge of wood turning, and that's what we look for. And we had a great one tonight. I really do like this demonstration. I like that we carried it on and you, you heard his changes, his adjustments to the project as it went along, uh, shooting from the hip. I would think so. You heard it in his voice. You heard it when he was doing it. It was like, uh, the wood's talking to me. What can I do here? Um, you don't have one of these tools. You can do it with this tool. And, and he's absolutely right. Roughing gouge is a terrible name for a tool because it makes thing, people think it can only do this. You know, I have went soup the nuts turning a pen and a spindle, just roughing gouge all the way through. And it's just one of those tools that when you learn how to work the tool and how to cut with a tool, you've mastered it. Don't go to a hundred different tools. Master a tool. Figure everything you can do. And that's what we'll do here at Worldwide Wood Turnings. We'll bring you all the little details and we'll bring you people just like this. And people just like this is one of our members and now we're going to pop on over to Brenda. No band-aids, Brenda is what we call her. And see, she's she's got a special project for us tonight, doesn't she, Dane? She does. Hey, Brenda. Yeah, so just as an example of uh, what Eddie's been talking about tonight, you know, anybody can participate, you know. You get an idea, just like I did. Call Dane, Eddie, whatever. Tell them about it. And they say, yeah, yeah, I like that idea. Yeah, let's do that. And that's exactly what I did. Okay. So what I want to do 
Okay, my suggestion was to get some of the new people more involved. Okay, somebody that hasn't um, posted before, somebody hasn't shared before, maybe. Okay, so what I'd like to do is pick two people tonight. Okay, the first person will give a challenge. The second person will accept the challenge. Okay. And the challenge is only for that second person. Okay. Any of you, anybody wants to do the challenge? Okay, fine. You know, you do what you want in your own garage, you know, but I just ask you not to share that on the meeting. Okay. The challenge is strictly for this second person. Okay. So what I'd like to do is um, somebody will give me a number and I will scroll down the participants list, okay? And see 21. if we can find a new member, somebody that's new, that's not shared before or whatever. And Dane, you guys are gonna have to help me with the names. <laughs> okay. um, and then we'll ask that person for a challenge, okay? And what I'm what I'm thinking is maybe two different items. Maybe something like um, you're looking for something that's less than three inches tall and has coves, or taller than six inches, or maybe a spindle, or you know, two different um, clarifications just, or just a couple different. Just a couple different ideas for the, the, yeah, the next what, person that's going to and be And then the second the person challenge. will take those two and put them together and then present us with whatever they came up with next week. Does that all make sense? <laughs> there is mud. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Okay. They can give me a number and I'm going to spin the wheel. <laughs> um, gosh, one to 10. 22. No, no. One, one to 10. One to 10? One to ten. Um, seven. All right. Let's see. We have. Okay, I'm going to read the names on this list right here in front of me now. Okay, and you're going to tell me the first one that is a new member. How about that? Okay, I know Randy Smith. He's not new. So no. Ray Davis in New Mexico is he a new guy? No. He's the second right. master. Raymond Schwartz. Raymond Schwartz. Uh, no, he's not new. Not new. Richard Hinky. No, but but he'd be a good he would be a good person for this. Okay, he's not uh, participated or whatever. In 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 yeah, Richard would be a good one. All right, I'm going to ask Richard. Richard Hinky. We're going to add him. Where you at, Richard? Richard, you yes, scared that's... him away. What's that? Yeah, did you scared I him away? I scared him away. Yeah. Okay. Oh, Richard's here. Richard's here. Richard. Oh, he ran away. All right, let's okay. go to another person. Okay. How about Ricky Stewart? Ricky Stewart. That's a rather fresh name. It's. Ricky Stewart, you available? Oh, he ain't got no, he ain't got no, uh, he's not on. Oh, there he is. He's got his video on now. And now who am I getting? All right, let's, let's remove that one. They're moving on me. I know, right? All right. There's Ricky. 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 Ricky, are you yeah. game? Are you game to identify a couple projects for somebody else to take on? I have no idea what I would say. Just give me two, give me two um turning um, points, points kind of like um, like um all right, something that would fit inside of a five by five by five box. Okay. Okay. Five by five, five box. By five box. It's gonna fit inside. Fit okay. Inside. Yep. Okay. And okay. one other piece of one other information piece for it. Information for it. 
Uh, could One be a color, a shape. Um, Maybe a collar. What do you think? A color? Or a texture. Or a texture. Eat on it. Eat on it. Natural edge. Natural edge. Okay, great. Natural edge. Natural edge. Okay, so, so something that will fit in a five by five box and has a natural edge. Has a natural edge. Yes. All right. I'm going to ask Ricky. Write your name down here. Ricky Stewart. All right. Ricky Stewart is going to give the challenge to... I'm going to find another person. Give me a number from one to ten. Five. One, two, three, four, five. All right, let's see who we got. Here, I think yours is a new one right here. Smidori Red Deer. You're muted. Can you unmute yourself? Hit the space bar. Yeah. There you go. That's uh, something I could attempt. <clears throat> All right. Okay. So will you accept the challenge to build something that will fit inside of a five by five box and has a natural edge? I, I, could I could probably wreck some wood, wreck some do, wood something like that. do something like Sweet. that. Sweet. All right. So can you tell me how do you pronounce your first name? Scott. Scott. <laughs> I like that. Okay. <laughs> What's the red deer? That's uh, in Alberta. That's where I live. Ah, okay. Scott from Red Deer has accepted Ricky's challenge. And you're going to be able to show this to us next week? If I can't, I'll put some a notice on the Facebook page, but I'll do my best. Okay. okay. Yeah, right. if not next week, then the following week. All right, okay. then. And then, okay. and then we'll, and we'll oh. do, and then so when, when um, so I think when Scott shows his his challenge piece, or, or not a challenge, but, but the piece that he comes up with, and then after that, then we'll we'll go and, and run through this sequence for the next group, for the next okay. person that's going to take it on. How's that sound? Great. And like I said, I want to I want to clarify too that this challenge or whatever you want to call it, okay, is only for Scott. Okay. Anybody else wants to do it, fine. I just ask that you please not show it. Okay. Sounds that good. way there's no competition. So okay. if we want to show it later, Brenda. Well, down the we're road. We'll show it later. After 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 the the person that that accepted the challenge, after they show what they did, then if somebody else made something, then they can show theirs, but not before the the, the participant that that took on the initial challenge. Yeah, but nobody's stealing Scott's fire. Yeah, that's well, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah I that's would even. I'd even I'd even give give them like a, a week wait limit before they show it because it you, you don't want to take a chance on, on making one of our new turners feel okay. upstaged. Yeah, there's right. no pressure. There's a bunch of friends getting together. I will right. tell the you, there's, to show it? there's no upstaging going to it be taking place. It wouldn't take much to upstage me. <laughs> and see that's what i want to prevent that's what i say about myself scott <laughs> yes that that's the the purpose of not asking yeah, you and me both others to show theirs is just not to hey, put pressure hey, on you hey, hey hey scott there'll be ton of us doing the same thing that you're gonna do we're gonna be right behind you okay <laughs> we're gonna be right behind you and uh don't worry about it. we're all gonna have fun um, okay. you got this, Scott. Appreciate so, that. Look, there'll be there'll be twenty of us doing the same thing. <laughs> okay. So, so why would it be a good idea? Maybe that you could you could do this challenge alongside a club challenge. So you could just choose a project for the rest of 
for members to do. We've done uh, that before and it didn't go over do, very well. We don't do oh. we don't do challenges or well not challenge, you know, but uh, yeah. It ended up being because... too much competition. Gotcha. All right. Okay. Yeah. All right. I get yeah. you. Yep. That's okay. what I want to avoid here. Okay? I'm a newbie myself as well, so I'm just uh, getting to know the ropes. <laughs> We're a bunch of friends. We're just a bunch of friends. Okay. What yeah. what was your well, name for pick you next week? <laughs> <laughs> no problemo. All right. All right. Good. Well, Scott, we'll see you. how that goes. Thank you for playing or playing along. And yes, I can't wait thanks, to see guys. what you're gonna do. Okay. Brenda, outstanding idea. Oh, I'm a genius. <laughs> yes, you are. For, okay. for this week. For this week. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Back <laughs> at the bottom of the barrel next week. Or maybe tomorrow. By tomorrow, I'll... <laughs> that's it. <laughs> All right. Well, we've got a few folks on right. for uh, gallery here. So let, let me jump in and, and start grabbing right. some folks for gallery. Let's see. And I know I missed some names earlier because there was a whole bunch of people going high and high and high and high. And it made me lose my chat. So got Ruby up. Okay. Staying in the Christmas theme. I had carved this Santa Claus with a reindeer and I needed a backdrop for it. Wow. So what I did was I glued three poplar boards together. Cool. And then I turned the outside and then screwed Santa Claus and the reindeer onto it. Good home for wow. them. Looks great, Ruby. That is awesome. You're amazing, Ruby. And Very you nice. I show you one one other idea. Yeah. Awesome. I just took possession of my new easy wood chuck. And from Rob Summerlin, I took a really great idea for keeping it all in one place and displaying it. Oh my. So I made this stand which is a little heavy. <laughs> and, well, you can see what it's like from the side, okay? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I made a few additions to it. Underneath each one of these parts, when you take the jaw off, what I have is I have a magnet. Oh, yeah. wow. Good idea. So that doesn't oh. get lost. I like that. And uh, <laughs> even this has two little magnets. And, you know, even the chuck has a couple of magnets underneath it. Nice. Good idea, Ruby. Good idea. And the other thing I did that Rob didn't do is I have that little ledge in the front. So I can always drop a pencil onto it. Hmm. Plus, you can catch more shavings. Great out. idea. That's true, and you don't waste the shavings if you want to glue them up later. <laughs> but I did did copy the idea for Rob Summerlin, and I want to make sure he gets credit for it. Yes, very good. Hey, Ruby, what type yes. of plywood did you use? Uh, just three-quarter uh, three inch um, uh, birch ply. Good on both oh. sides. Okay, because they also have a three-quarter inch uh, poplar, which is very light. I use it all the time for making jigs and stuff. Okay. So it, it reduces the weight, that's all. So there's one three-quarter inch piece here that I drilled the... Actually, I cut the holes in with my scroll saw. And then this is a straight piece. And it was into that this second piece that I drilled the little holes to take the magnets, and I glued them into it. Nice. So now Easy Wood are going to be producing those and giving one free to everyone that buys a chuck, yeah? Well, actually, I heard that. I heard that. Part, 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 of, part of the reason that I made it up is that I have to do an Easy Wood demo on the 12th of December at the Lee Valley store. And this way, I have the chuck with me. It's displayed as well as I can easily take the parts. And because of the magnets, I don't have to worry about losing any parts. Right. Okay. Yep. Yes. Great job. Thanks for sharing, Ruby. Very nice. All right. I'll go set that thing down. Yeah. <laughs> okay, you want to grab one in, please? 
All right, let's go. Let's see. Let's go with Timothy McCoy. He's a newcomer. Hey, Tim. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. All right, great. Welcome. I can't feel feel really bad following Ruby. She she's uh, amazing. Um, I just was going to share a couple urns that I worked on this week. Uh, this they're uh, this is a smaller urn. Um, Right now they have a more than a French fit. It's quite a quite a fit. Snug, we said tonight. <laughs> yeah, snug, snug fit. fit. Yeah, snug. <laughs> snug fit. Uh, so I will work on that, taking that down a bit, turning that uh, lid off. But I do want a pretty tight fit because it is going to be a, a pet urn. Right. Um, it's really pretty. It's made, it's made of uh, uh, ambrosia maple. And... Uh, and walnut for the top, which again has a snug fit. You see that so angel in it? I made that guy. Um, an angel. Another. Uh, there was an there was an angel urn. in the other one. What's what's that? There was, a, there, was a, there was an angel on the side of the other urn. An it's angel like figures. <laughs> yeah. So this is one of the things that's unique about this group is there's there's a bunch of us that see stuff in wood figures. And, and we like calling them out. Okay. Yeah, it's a, str it's a strange thing. We have had it for a long time. Can't get over it. I got to find it. <laughs> no, okay. Uh, <laughs> I'll look for it. Um, so the other one, uh, I believe this is Bocote. Love that. Um, also Ambrosia Maple. Same same tree. Um, none of these I've finished on them yet. And uh, Wow. This is a little piece of um, the black stuff. Blackwood. <laughs> like, you know, Blackwood. Ebony. Ebony. Thank you. Sorry. Ebony. Ebony. Uh, so oh. I was going to, I'm thinking about making it into one of those uh, finials that you guys displayed um, with the ribbon, ribbon. Yep. Uh, but a ribbon that spirals out. So Beautiful. that's going to be my next, next part of carving, carving the finial out. And this nice has work, Tim. a little better of a, a fit, but it it's still a a good nice friction fit. Totally I've both got, gorgeous. Um, I've got to say that that is a very beautiful finish on that. If it ain't got no finish on it, because there oh, it is doesn't a have nice that, shine on there. It's just uh, burnished, uh, burnished up with uh, steel steel wool. I sand it to four hundred and then steel wool. So. Very nice. Very nice. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Jim. Thank you. All right. Let's go to Mr. Grinstead. Hey, Bob. Here. And uh, how about muted. that? Maybe I'm unmuted now. Now we got you. All right. Yeah, I did a little, uh, I don't know what you call this, little goblet. Let me turn a uh, different light on here. Maybe get some uh, more light on the subject. Yeah, how about that? And uh, it's a captured ring. It has uh, a holder down here where it will hold the rings. Oh, and, wow. uh, but it's supposed to be a uh, wedding goblet. Nice, 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 nice. Wow. That's pretty. But anyway, it was just a, a small deal I found on uh, saw on Facebook, I think. <laughs> Yeah, I don't remember whose it was, but, but I enjoyed that's, it. That's such a great idea, Bob, because always you know, you always want to show it and to have it find out stopping in the in the middle. Yeah. Yeah, what kind of finish you got on that, Bob? Uh, it's that Krylar, uh triple thick. It is just wow. so shiny. It's incredible. Oh yeah, yeah, it's real shiny. Beautiful. It almost, it almost looks like uh, epoxy on here, but but it's not. It's the Krylar. Very nice. But uh, but that's it. That's the only thing I got. Right on. Thanks, Bob. Uh huh. Right. Let's see. Randy, you still here? There he is. Hey, Randy. Good evening. Y'all ready, Randy? Y'all ready? Uh, actually, no, I'm not. <laughs> uh, let me. Uh, 
Want me to come back to you? Uh, yeah, please. Okay. Let's go. Let's see. Terry Reynolds, you still here? I am. I am, I am. I'm unmuted. Gotcha. Can you, you got me. Okay. Well, I had quite a bit going on, so I'm going to try to go a little fast so we don't use up all the time. I wanted to show a few things. I'm going to try to get this and see if I can turn the camera around. That's not what I want to show. Talking about the things that we do, I made the Christmas ornaments on one of my wooden trees. Uh, and I wanted to say that almost everything on here is you could find a demonstration of it in the Worldwide Wood Turners Gallery. Because everything I could almost tell you who most of them, I don't remember who demoed the angels. I don't think it was one of us. Of course, we all know Birdhouse Bob and the finials from Matt and whoever else added the finials in, the two piece finials, more birdhouses, more. This is Joaquin Vincent demoed this last week at our in one of our meetings at the club, just a regular uh, ornament without the birdhouse and the top on it. And then I incorporated the ribbon finial and another angel. The holy baubles are from, oh, I'm old and forgot the name. I'll think of it in a minute. Theo. Theo did that on the record power. And I did that. You can see the angels, like I said, they're inside. There's two of them, one on top and one inside. I think I showed that before. And that's the snowman. And that's another holy bobble. And that's another holy bobble with a, whoa, going to make everybody seasick. <laughs> and more of it. Anyway, I tried to put it in the gallery in the, the Gestapo at the gallery didn't like it and told me I couldn't put it in there. And the explanation I got was because it was brown on brown and he didn't like that. Hmm. I thought about painting it white just to see what it would look like. He might be right. It might look better. And it wouldn't be a real big risk because it's just a stick. <laughs> I could always make another one, you know. But that, and the inside out, I don't remember who demoed that either, but these are all from demonstrations probably from our club, almost all of them. And then I finished up a couple more mesquite pedestal bowls that I've been making. I made them out of different wood, but these have been selling. The mesquite ones have been selling. So I made a couple more of those. And uh, I showed those before. And that's pretty good. Now I want to get down. I'm going to flip the camera back if I can. And, and go on just a little bit longer. If you bear with me. Our lantern. Of course, I had to try that. I hate to, you guys to demo and then me not try anything. <laughs> so I tried to make our, the lantern. And it didn't go very well. And I threw it in the trash. And then I went to make the second one, and it went worse. But that was pretty much how the demo went, so I didn't feel too bad about it. <laughs> so anyway, nice job, I took Terry. It, walked away, and I come back, and I said, "Well, this is a real good piece to practice on to see if I can't figure out what I'm doing wrong." So I went around and finished the rest of the cuts and got them pretty good. I was trying to take too much at a time. That's all. I set up some jigs on the work table and tried to just run into them, and that didn't work. I had to go back and forth. That was the second one I made, and that one, they all got the lights in them. They, the lantern, these bobbed at them like that. But I went and got the, I'm going to show you the, the tea lights. These tea lights came from Michael's. 
they were like six dollars for seven dollars for six of them and these were from walmart and they were the same price and i like these better they put out a little more light and they're a little bigger and they fit in an inch and a half cut out just perfect and they light it up a little better on the inside and so that was the first two this is the third one mesquite it came out pretty nice I don't have it lit up, but you can see how much difference the lighting is in the with the one from Walmart. I like them a little better, but I got it. I didn't wreck it too bad. I got a couple of errors in it, but it come out pretty good. That I was learning hard. and learning, and this is another one like it, and all following from our demo. But this is the third one that I wanted to show you. It looks to me like a birdhouse. So I figured if it was a birdhouse, it needed a bird. I don't know how much you can see my bird in there. Oh, yeah. Can I like the bird it? idea. I and then you can light it up, too. Yeah. It's like a birdcage. It's a birdcage. For some reason, I've lost my audio. I'm not hearing any response from anybody. I don't know what happened. That's, uh, that's, I know what that's happened. That's a greeny bird. It looks there. like a birdcage. I, I, wonder, I, I, like a I thought I saw a kitty cat. <laughs> I was wondering why nobody was responding. <laughs> but now I can hear you. But anyway, yeah, the bird, the bird I thought it come out really neat. In, the, in that light, Great idea. it it up really nice. Oh, Oops. yes. And one thing that was really funny about this thing is the way that bird is shaped. And that little tea light, I Over think it puts left. off a little heat. I think the tea light puts out a little heat. You can set this thing on the table, and every time you look at it, that bird's moving. I think, <laughs> I think it makes a thermal in there, and the heat makes it move around the way the tail is shaped, because oh. it just keeps on moving. <laughs> wow. So anyway, but the, the, these two mes uh, mesquite ones, they're next on my list, but I don't have any more birds. I'm going to get an appointment in town Friday, so I'll get some more birds. And these two are going to get birds, too. They look like birdhouses. Yeah. yeah. Bird cages. Yeah. That's a good idea. And I want to thank all you guys for all your demonstrations. I really, like I say, everything comes to it. And usually on Thursday morning, I'm out there trying to do something that came up. I don't want to copy it. I don't want to change it and put my spin on it. But. That's what we all should be doing, and that's what makes the club so much fun. Indeed. Indeed. And, Thanks, and that's Mary. what I got. Much appreciated. Randy, are, are you ready, I would, Randy? I'm with you, Terry. This is, a, this is really cool. Really cool. I'm with Randy, just like Are you ready, Randy? Yes. Okay. I'm going to go back to Randy here, and then I will be right back. i got to go give the cat a shot. Uh, I built a uh, ducks chuck, and uh, I actually made it out of two pieces of uh, three-quarter inch material. I drilled it with a hole saw, which was why it has a hole in the middle. And I intend to put a uh, 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 like a uh, screw chuck in it. And uh, as part of that, what I did was I made a segmenting <coughs> Now this is a segment. Uh, this one is, and I can't see all of it. Let me reduce it in size a little bit here. This is a segment, and it is uh, 16 segments, but I actually created uh, several different ones. I made a 10, a 12, and a 16, and I uploaded them to the uh, website uh, using the contact uh, uh, things. So uh, the nice thing about these is they are PDFs, and you can make them any size you want. You can make them like three or four inches across, or you can make them six or eight or 10 or 12 inches across. 
you can print uh, in poster mode, which means you can make these things in as big as you want. So if you want a segment, uh, a segmenting index guide that's like 12 inches across, you can do it with this uh, with this way, with this particular file. So I'm hoping they'll post that on the uh, website, and uh, uh, that's really what I have to share for tonight. I will get those up. Hey, hey, okay. Randy, show Thank us you. what you mean by segmenting. Are you really segmenting, or is it just an index wheel? Uh, it's an index wheel. Okay. Okay. But you could use it for segmenting if you made just one segment. Uh, like they make a, um, what's it called? There's a segmenting jig and it's called, and it's used for making segments, for making round segments. A wedgie sled. Wedgie board. The wedgie, wedgie sled, sled, yes. And if you use this, you can actually print out the wedge. Oh, so sure. If you want yeah. to make a 16 segment or a 12 segment, I uploaded 10, 12, and 16 sided segments. So uh, those are up, they're going to be up there uh, whenever. So, uh, and you can use that as to make a wedgie sled. Sure. Uh, and in the case of mine, what I did, you can see where I've started marking it. This is, uh, I marked this with a 12. And this is the, the 12 segment, uh, uh, this is the 12 segment indexing wheel. And so uh, that's an easy way to create a set, uh, to do a segment. So that's really all I have to share. Okay, wonderful. Thanks, Randy. All right, let's go to Daniel Smith. You're welcome. Hey, Dan. Hey, everybody. Well, I showed you this once before that I made this. And I went too thin. I had the outside finished. So I put a little finish on the inside of it. But I kept looking at it, trying to figure out what happened. And what happened was when I started sanding it, the wood moved. But before that, when I was cutting it, the wood was moving and I didn't notice it because it's real thin on this side and it's thick on this side. So that's what happened to that one. This one turned out pretty decent. I'll try and get that light out of your eyes. And... Got a bit of a shine on it. Yeah. And then I made, I had just a little scrap of wood, and I said, well, maybe I'll try another one. <laughs> it looked like miniature old-time bathtubs. Yeah. Oh, so they're kind of cute. Kinda cute. <laughs> hmm. and, and then I decided to do a Christmas uh, ornament. Oh, and I cute. made this tree. And this has that uh, chameleon paint on it, on the top. And I stained the rest down here. And I put brown for the uh, trunk. Nice. So, and I finished the bottom of it a little bit. I got to do a little work on the bottom yet. But uh, the one thing I forgot to do with this was sand it around because I got the lines in it. Mm. You can see ah. the lines. But hey, there ain't no look, Christmas tree that's smooth. Right. You live and learn. Oh yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty though. That was a little kind of star thing on top. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But that's Very all cool. I got. Very good, uh, Dan. Look good. Very good. Man. Nice job. You have, I appreciate your uh, 
So, <laughs> you're, and you can criticize my stuff because I don't learn <laughs> unless I get feedback. So if you I got think a, they look good. If you got a suggestion that might help me, other news and green wood. Uh, <laughs> I appreciate it. Job. <laughs> I'm only kidding. I love the little bathtubs. It's the suggestions. <laughs> That's what we all like is suggestions. Yes. Yes. Nothing wrong with that at all. Not not criticism, right. suggestions. Right. 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 Not trying to tear anyone down. We're building them up. That's right. And I like to if if I don't get uh information or feedback, then I'm not learning anything. Correct. Thank you for stating that, Dan. Yep. Thank you much. I appreciate it. You bet. All right, let's go to Mr. Edwards. Hey, Dave. Oh, no, we can't hear you. Hello. Now we can hear you. Hi. How are you? Good. I, uh, I've made a project that I've been wanting to do for a long time. I'm 82 years old. So I ended up with something like this here. Oh, nice. Well done, Dave. That's pretty. Oh, yeah. yeah that's awesome. Hey, Dave, does that handle have a stiletto in it? really of pretty. It? What do you mean? Pull it out and you got a knife? No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm self-defense. <laughs> I'll just club him over the head. <laughs> Maybe a sword? No. Is that all one piece? No, it's, it's two pieces from here. One for the handle, one for the... Okay, yeah, that's what I meant. I guess the stick itself was all one piece. Yeah. Well, I wow. in order to put this decoration on here, I had to make it two pieces so you could slide that piece of the acrylic on there and then turn it down at the same time. Wow. Hey, Dave, what do you need that for? I'm 82 years old and I'm getting, I uh, can't hardly walk. He needs it for protection. Different reason. I tell people I got mine to hit people who ask. <laughs> well, I go. can't. I can't reach anybody from here. <laughs> Very good. That's nice all I job. have. Thank you. Nice looking piece, Dave. All I, right, actually, Dave. What actually? What? You know, that's kind of impressive to turn a piece <clears throat> that long. Yeah. Um, um, I I I look at that to, several times. I have I I've have had, not, I've had, I, I've had to use a steady wrench as yeah. I go along. Um, that that is I I think is a big big feat. Um, I'll tell you, I I I've I've looked at it and thought about it several times, and um, yeah. it's it's thirty thirty six and a half inches long. That's 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 a that's a nice turning. Yeah, it is. Thank you. And it is. All right, let's go to Doug. It's all, Doug? It's, it was all made Perfect. out of walnut. Oh, nice. We got you, Doug. Can't oh, hear no, you, Doug. No volume. It's like you're on muted, but we can't hear you. Pick a different micro microphone. Nope. 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 Is that your dad back back you. behind you? <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to be. Well, it's good language. to see you both, Doug. <laughs> right. yeah. Now you're muted. All right. Call her back at me if you okay. get it figured out. All right. Oh, there he, he is. He's got it. He's got that it. Better? Okay. Yeah. Very good. Uh, it's not my computer, so I didn't know what I was doing. Um, yesterday's live. Uh, did a, a uh, yeah, whatever this is. Um, horn beam. Horn beam, horn beam that's it. <laughs> Could have forgot what it was. Anyway, it's just kind of a utility bowl. 
uh, came out pretty nice, all, all said and done. It, but uh, I wanted to show you my warm-up piece as well. I like to do a warm-up piece before I get in and do the live. And it almost fits uh, the challenge that was given. It's, it's slightly larger than five by five, though. It's a piece of cherry. Great. That, uh, we turned, and, and or I turned uh, uh, the outside one day and, and uh, yesterday and then hollowed it out uh, today. Uh, that's got just my normal abrasive paste and wax on the outside, a little pyrography just to change it up a little bit. Of course, left the bark on it. Um, that bark was a little pain, but it, it came out just fine. Has a couple of uh, limb inclusions Looks there. Looks good, Doug. Cool. Yeah, it's nice, Doug. Very nice. Thank you all. Very nice piece. Thank you. That's it tonight. All right. Thanks for, thanks for popping in. Yeah, buddy. All right, let's go to Mr. Harbor. Matt, how you doing? I'm Wake good. Up, how are you? How's everybody <laughs> I'm, I'm, tonight? I'm good. I was I was doing snowmen. So here's one of them. I love those eyes. Mm. So the face <laughs> is, eyes the face good. is painted. I got uh, some of this stuff on here is is still gluing. So, and then I got another guy who's kind of similar. He's bigger. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Different eyes. Those are cute eyes. And then I did an, a, a third one. And he's this guy here. And he's Those up to something. Me. And he's still gluing. You can see the glue, the white glue. There's a little dry clear, but. I love that hat. And, and this is this cool, is the glue. Yeah. And the hat is uh, uh, silver maple. That looks great. It's cool. It looks good, Matt. Thank you. Um, Matt, detail how there. do you like that? Key. How do you I'll like that quick and thick? I, I love this stuff. This is the glue I'm using. Uh, it, it's it, it it dries quick. It dries clear. It holds well and strong. Uh, I'm it's I'm ha I'm delighted with it. Uh, I, I, yeah, it's a tight bond, quick and thick, and uh, I, I don't think it's waterproof. If somebody can correct me, whether you know, I actually don't know. <laughs> it's, That's what um, I was getting ready to ask. Oh, like that. What's that? Indoor. No, I don't think it is either. Don't don't use it outside, indoor only. Okay. okay. Yeah, it says interior projects on the front. Yeah. Okay. But, but yeah, very it, good glue though. Yeah, I, I love the glue, and it's it's like my go to on small projects. Um, you know, I, I don't I don't make hardly anything that goes outdoors anyway, so you know, I, I'm usually fine with it, and and that that's why the gods gave us Type Bond three. So, um, right. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. All right. Thanks, Matt. All right. Let's go to Chief. Hey, Dennis. Hi, everybody doing? I turned this uh, last week, but I finally got a finish on it. So I had to get it ready because it's going to be a retirement gift uh, coming Friday. So nice. nice. Love Great. the shine. Got four, four coats of uh, tongue oil on it. Wow. We're getting better, getting better with it. So that's all I got. Kind of wood? What kind of wood? It's a cherry. It's a eleven inch, eleven inch in diameter. It's a two and three quarters, you know, thick. So nice job. Well done. Thank you. What what makes some right. of the cherry red and some of it not? Anybody know? Like the piece I have here brown. is real red. You you know what? Most of the time, it's iron. Iron does things to so many things um, in so many different ways. I mean, if if you go to Sedona, how it makes it like a copper, you know, like yeah the yeah you know, yeah from the rust from the rust. Oh well, yeah. Yeah, it, it, it does the same kind of actions inside woods in a lot of ways. But I also think uh, the area, you know, in which it's grown, you know, whether it's in the north or the south, different uh, yep. soil content as well. Yeah, yeah the, 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 reds, the reds in my cherries are, are, are very vivid, and, and I've got a lot of iron in the groundwater here, so that makes a lot of sense. Um, my, my wild black cherry though, has heartwood that isn't red, 
which I find really pretty when you get when you get both of the heartwood and the sapwood in a piece of wood in a piece of turn a turned piece because because it's very very cool. Yeah, because yeah, the sap wood up up here is very is very white. Yep, same same here. I, I think you and I have the same same woods, yeah. Dennis. <laughs> yeah. Uh, cherry also right. tends to uh, turn darker with age. Right. Sure. So the sunlight will turn it darker. The UV rays will make it darker and darker. Yeah, like much like it does with any of the colored woods. How about finish? Does a finish usually make it darker too? To an extent. Yeah, your oils will make it a little darker. Mm -hmm. You know, I have right. trouble with Bradford pear because I, I like to turn Bradford pear. It's real easy to turn and nice wood, but when I put any clear coat on it, it gets dark in a hurry. So yeah, maybe uh hopefully next week Martin. Uh, we'll be be on again, and if I remember, if I don't remember, somebody remind me. Um, but Martin has a process uh, when it comes to um, preserving the white and white woods, and I don't know if that would uh, be applicable for um, trying to help preserve on the darker ones. But he's got a process that keeps white, keeps keeps your holly white, and keeps your sycamore white. So. Hey, Dan, can you hear me? Dan? Yes. It's Sue. Can yes. you, you can hear me? Okay. Yes. I don't know what it's going to have my name as. I'm on my cell phone and really don't know how to work it in Zoom. But got a friend of mine, well, Peggy Schmidt, I don't know if she's on tonight. Uh, she usually uses uh, oxalic acid to treat uh, box elder. So that just so it doesn't turn yellow, it stays white with the red streaks. Yeah, I've used it to bleach wood out. Yeah, and maybe that's what Martin uses too. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Just a thought. Okay, how you doing, girl? I'm hanging in there. Yeah. I uh, they're going to come get me at seven forty-five. So, nothing to eat or drink after midnight. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> I'll 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 think you. I'll think about all of you as they're zapping me tomorrow morning. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll be I'll be thinking about you as well. Yeah, I'll I'll let you know, Dane, how I do. Okay. Let me okay. Yep, I know. I know. I will. I will. But I just wanted to say hello to everybody, and uh, you guys take care. Oh, all right. Thank you. Thank you. Prayers, yeah. prayers, thank Brenda. You. I mean, take take care. Prayers with you. Yeah. Prayers for you. Take care, you guys. Love you all. Bye bye. All right. Love you too. Bye bye. Yeah. Take care, girl. I tell you, well, important. I've got this uh, natural edge birdhouse inspired by Bob Moffat. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, I did a demo in Waco and turned this offset uh, weed base. And I, I wish I'd have paid more attention to the grain where I could have got that grain dead center. Uh, with that rise there, it's uh, this is hackberry. That's really That's pretty, pretty, though, King. Pretty yeah, pretty green. Uh, and that I just wished it was centered, you know. I think you're just oh, yeah. yeah, it's got some feathering to it. It's just pretty good. But I just threw it in there and turned it, not, not thinking about that. I hadn't had grain like that, made one of these out of the grain like that. So I've been turning Christmas trees, and I picked out a couple of them I really like. And th this is out of Mulberry. Um, just don't know where it's showing up so good. Not, not very good. It's got a bunch of got yellow on the edges. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. It's yeah. Nice. Pretty, it was over on the uh, sapwood side there. Yeah. But I turned some elm, and I was surprised how well the grain rings showed up in this uh in oh wow i just that, 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 nice. cool. american elm american elm right. american I don't elm, have any elm, idea. Siberian elm ha has more of of like the the crazy Siberian elm. elm's white right now this is in south texas so what is american elm or whatever well, it's it, it's I certainly wouldn't... not cedar elm i can tell you that yeah 
There's another elm piece. Oh, I love that. A little cross on top. Mm -hmm. Pretty. But the growth rings are so tight and they really showed up, you know. Yes. They look good. Very nice. So, uh, A lot of character, yes. Yeah. Good looking stuff there, Joaquin. <laughs> Thank you. Good. I'm good. <laughs> All right. So good. That's Thank you. Very nice. Yes, you Guys, are. I'm going to, just before the next person comes, I'm going to drop out and say good night. Thanks for having me tonight. Oh, thank, thank you, Steve. Good night. Appreciate it, Thanks, buddy. Steve. Good night, good Steve. Thanks, Steve. Thanks. Good night. Good night. Thank you, Steve. Look at the head on this guy. Look at that guy. Man. I bet he made something big this week. Scary as he's concentrating. Watch out. <laughs> How are you sleeping? I think he's asleep. asleep. He might be a flip. Howard, he has you spotlighted. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you woke me up. <laughs> I thought I fell asleep. All right. Anyway. Well, do, do you, do you need to rub the Sandman out of your eye? You want me to yeah. come back now? <laughs> no, I, no li I'm good. Let's, let's, I'm good. Let's see. Are y'all over right. there? My oh, goodness. Okay. Yeah, we're here. Oh my God. I knew you had my that. God. Oh my goodness. Beautiful. Oh, we're watching the stuff he's been putting Holy up on Facebook. Cow. Gee, yeah, beautiful. Okay. That's Great. gorgeous. I'd be asleep <laughs> right now, too, if I did that. Hey, hey, y'all, can Howard talk about it? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, this is a vase. Okay. <laughs> not, not this, but this. <laughs> And uh, it's, it's it's cherry, and um, um, the color is for uh, Fabric Castell yeah. Andy ink pens, and um, I finished it with um, clear enamel, and the inside is um, uh, flat black enamel, and about twelve, about a foot tall, a little bit more than a foot tall, and eight inches diameter up here, and about a week and a half work typography oh, yes right on on the background here yes yeah yes so anyway wow another I guess, it, piece. I guess it's supposed Three. to be a vine i don't know what i was thinking beautiful piece. <laughs> i don't know but it's pretty i don't think i was smoking vine but anybody else <laughs> anyway Okay, so that's all I got. The pyro pen. Yep. Nice job yep. on that. Nice job on that. All right. Thank you. That's all. You're welcome. Oh, all right. That's great. Love it. Let's go back to let's go back to Kelly here. Kelly, are you going to follow this? Come on, Kelly, jump up there. <laughs> hey, mine, mine's cherry too. I sure wish I didn't have to go behind Howard. Ooh. Ooh. Look at that. Oh, nice. nice. That, that looks there. pretty good, dude. That looks great, cool. Kelly. Sure does. Now, how did you, you cut the square edges? <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> yes, Ken. Looks good. Looks good. Now you're, you're following all those UK guys making those shields, right? No, not UK guys and shields. <laughs> Did you plan that really or it good. just happened? <laughs> no, I did that on purpose. Well, I mean, how, looks good. How 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 did you do it? I uh, I put a block of twelve by twelve block of cherry on the lathe and turned it thin. into a uniform thickness platter, and then I got out some power tools and started cutting designs in them. That's really yeah, nice, Kelly. Very nice. I cool. painted it black and then I impressed it. Yeah, uh, it didn't show up real good, but it's yeah, it's yeah. Good. <laughs> Kelly, uh, Kelly, I think it needs more yellow. <laughs> I got a little yellow uh, on there. Yellow. <laughs> uh, and you know, I didn't want it to be overwhelmed with yellow or look like yeah. a cartoon. <laughs> but I don't think that those couple little tiny areas with the yellow help like really define the pattern that was going all the way through so, it does it I shows like up <laughs> so that was kind of an inside joke it was a, it was uh, an inside joke we talked before anyway. 
But that's all I got. All right. Thanks, Kelly. Nice job, Kelly. All Beautiful. right. Well, it's almost top of the hour. We're at the end of our gallery list. Let's uh, swing it back to Captain Eddie. And Glenn was on there. What he's got to say. Oh, well, so we'll catch up on folks. We'll keep going. Uh, what I want to jump in right now is if you've just tuned in this evening to this, this weekend's meeting, uh, this week's meeting, uh, we have reinitiated the, the newsletter with the help of Joaquin. So the newsletter is going to come out on January 3rd, 2024. And it's going to be edited by Joaquin. But there's a lot of seats in Joaquin's gallery. He needs more help. And tonight, you heard some suggestions from members about how you can do this, do this, do this, ideas and all. And I can send those in. That You can send those in to the editor of the Put a Newsletter, and he can include them in our newsletter, which will come out every other week. And it'll be a complete newsletter just for WorldwideWoodTurners.org. So if you've got some high-resolution photographs, or let me just put it this way. If you've got photographs of your work, send them to us. Because we've got room. We've got an editorial staff. We've got a, 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 a group of folks looking for tips and tricks. We've got the, tick and tr the tips and tricks master on board with us. Yeah, we just hadn't told him that's his job yet. But we have all these things going on with you, our members driving the bus. So our newsletter's coming out. We have stickers available. We told you how to get your name on, get our name or your, your club name on shirts and, and more. It's all right here on WorldWideWoodTurners.org. Great demonstration tonight from, from Ireland. Uh, I, I enjoyed it, really did, with a lot of variety options. And as you saw in our demonstration, it was being adjusted as it went along to fit the piece of wood and wood came out of here. He saw it in his heart, what he wanted to make, and he adjusted to it. Well, there wasn't a plan. The plan was right here. And he just kind of tweaked that a little bit until it really shined. And that's what we want to teach. And also, you've seen some other ideas come to fruition tonight. I like it where we saw all those ornaments and all those ornaments came from where? One source, worldwide wood turners. Mm -hmm. Every one of them, there's a demonstration for every one of those ornaments on our website, the most complete website for wood turning in the entire world. And if you need to have more information than that, I don't know where you can get it. This is the place to go. And this is a place to share it because that's why we got together. We've been here for 218 meetings because we like to get together on a tailgate and share stories, lies, and talk about our work. And we've seen some fantastic work here tonight. I hope you join us next week and for weeks after. And bring a friend. We were, what, 110, 115 folks tuned in tonight. And more than that, watch our repeats. And every single action on this meeting, in these meetings, unedited, appears on our newsletter. I mean, and on our website, the world's greatest, greatest website. So if you miss something tonight... You had missed it. It's just getting a little late getting to you. All right. I'm Captain Ed on behalf of all these folks. And you've heard all those names mentioned tonight. And they're not in a hierarchy. They're just a bunch of wood turners who got together on the tailgate. That's an old joke. Got together on the tailgate and started talking about wood turning, sharing ideas, seeing what could come up, what could happen. And we've seen, we talk about these folks, we tease about people. I mean, we saw Howard sitting back, just taking it easy, relaxing. Um, and we've had some other folks that tune in tonight that we know they're here every week with us, or they tune in a little bit late. All these people are here for one reason, same thing you are, wood turning. I thank you for joining us. I invite you back next week. Please bring a friend. And above Save all, the chat. bring Save that. Save the chat. Save the chat. Bring that artwork that you do. Our notepad guarantee stands to this date. I know you like to have a little criticism, but don't feel bad unless you ask us something. We're just going to look at your artwork and, and admire it. We're not going to criticize you. That's not in the program. We want to see what comes out of the brain of yours. We want to see what your tools can turn out and what you come up with. 
And just like we heard tonight, I took your ideas and I tweaked them a little. And I just want to see how many people tweaked the little ornament idea we saw tonight. And how many folks have a little spinning head ornaments next time we get together? And oh, oh, don't forget, Brenda has challenged a new has asked a new member to challenge another member to turn something and then display it. And we don't want to, if you do the exact same turning, it's a piece to fit in a five by five by five container and it has to have a natural edge. That was the challenge or the dare or whatever you want to call it. In two weeks, we're going to see what it is. You can have the same thing, but don't steal the fire. I want to see what comes up from that. And then we're going to do it again. We're going to ask another member to give us another challenge for yet another member to meet that challenge. Boy, this is going to get good. Now, yes. you, got to be, you got to be careful who you pick to give the challenge to because – you know, you pick one of these, I don't want to use the term weirdos, but you, know, you pick one of these weirdos that's in our group, and you never know what you're going to get. You really don't, which that's makes this. That. In, <laughs> Billy Bird. I didn't want to say Billy Bird's name. I really didn't. Well, well, to, to, to quantify it, um, the, the known weirdos are going to be excluded from it. Oh, okay. Hey, that's not right. fair. Come on. <laughs> I, was, I, was, no, no, I didn't and, mention and you. The reason, and the reason why is is we want to get some of our 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 members who are whether they're new or if they're sitting in the backdrop to, to get them more involved and and to see that it's you know they don't have you don't have to be bashful. You know, we're no, all no. we're all friends here, and we're all learning from each other. And and I think this is a sweet sweet idea that Brenda came up with. You know, have somebody identify something to make for, and and have somebody else accept the the challenge to be able to make it. I think it's fantastic. Yeah, because you know, if, if get comfortable with sharing. Yeah, comfortable right. with sharing. If we got off the deep end and picked only on the characters, and I'm talking characters. Okay, I shouldn't use weirdos. The characters. It wouldn't go as far as I think it'll go as if we just ask one member to ask another member. Right. And because we're all sitting out there at the same time, I just want to see, hey, what'd you come up with? Thank you, Brenda. That was a great idea. What'd you come can up we, with? Can, can we have a, ca a character with a capital C challenge too then? Well, You're going to have to go with that. That, that kind of resembles, that resembles my last name, so I'm not, no. A character with a capital C <laughs> challenge again, too. So, like, uh, we, we've got a, a, a newbie and a beginner challenger dare going on. What about a care? You know, one for those of us who are characters. Oh, Have one oh, of us absolutely. characters do, come up with a challenge, and the rest of us characters, like, yeah, get I, in the shop and you. make it. Well, so you're saying you so, want to challenge somebody. Well, I don't know, I have anything off the top of my head, but I like something to say. Hey, Matt, do something weird <laughs> and give me some ideas. <laughs> but next week we cover that. Next week <laughs> at seven o'clock Central Time, we open it up and we see what you characters come up with because it's your club. We want to have fun and see what's going on, really. And I like to see what's hiding in those closets. It's for me, uh, Japanese. to some degree. To some degree, okay. Uh, but <laughs> this has been fun. This has been fun. On behalf of all the wood turners in the world, thank you so much for joining us this week. When you get in the shop, we saw Brenda was out of condition. She was, but she's going to get better. Uh, we've heard some good reports about some of our members that have been under the weather. We've had some losses in the group lately, but we're all adults, and we're going to pray for each other and get there. It's really been a great week, folks. You make the week. You really do. Thank you. This week, please be safe. Get out in the shop, make some shavings. And, you know, save the chat, but above all else, make some shavings. Get on out there, everybody. Excellent gallery. Excellent demonstration. Y'all take care. Be safe. Good night, everybody. Stick around. We're going to keep chatting. Good night, Eddie. 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 Good night, Eddie.
Hey, it was Eddie. a very, very hey, enjoyable, Dan. very enjoyable evening for sure. Hey, yeah. Dan. Very, very Night, enjoyable. Eddie. Night, Dan. all. The character challenge. Dan. I like that. The character challenge. The capital C. Well, I would say, you know, call it the weirdo challenge, but you don't want to use that word. So No, no, <laughs> no. We don't want to use that word. Because, yeah. <laughs> you know, Doug Riss still belongs to this club. That's a oh. It was a very enjoyable evening. Period. Yeah, I'm, I'm with all the rest of the folks who say, hey, I resemble that remark. <laughs> well, exactly. You know, that's what I'm saying, you know.